My check, my check, one, two, one, two, my check, my check, one, two. What's the deal, my people? You know what it is, Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you, another one. And this one is Lovecraft Country. Lovecraft Country. That's what we're doing here. And we are doing a Q&A on Lovecraft Country. You know, I got a lot of questions on Lovecraft Country this week. So many that I, I, I had to do a video on it because I can't answer all of these questions. Too much. Let's get the camera and everything else working here. There we go. I cannot answer. I didn't even check my camera to see how I look in there. Nothing. I just put it on. So this is what you get. If it looks terrible, okay. It does. That's what it's going to be for the rest of the show because I got no, I didn't check it. I don't have time to do that right now. I'm just here doing this thing right now. So, all right. Now, as I said, I got a lot of questions on Lovecraft Country, thousands of them, and I just there's no way that I can just answer all of these questions just in the comment section. I mean, it's too much. I, I keep leaving them, keep leaving them, you know. But it's a lot of questions, so I figure we will answer these questions right now, live on the air. As always, the thug mug is in hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that, appreciate that. Put up to everybody out here in the chat, join us right now and everything else. I got all the issues fixed, but putting the chat up on the screen, I seen that I know exactly how it how it happens, and now I know exactly how to fix it. It's just a silly, I guess, thing that StreamYard does that you have to just, you know, double check. So now we have no problem doing that and everything else, and that's it. We'll do it live. It's like Bill O'Reilly, right? That's like, we'll do it live. We'll do it like Bill O'Reilly live. All right. So, yeah. So, if you have any questions, too, that you want answered, please put them in the chat right now. And we will answer these questions. Plus, I have, you know, a whole bunch of other questions that I have to answer right now and stuff. So, let's get this thing started. You know, the last episode was a really good episode. You know, it started off, yeah, we had, we had the... Emmett Tills, let me see, go down, let me see, you can see that better, it's better, better for you to see that, you know, so we had, you know, Emmett Tills, uh, murder, and we're going to go through a couple of things that happened in this episode, uh, while we ask these questions and everything else, we'll go through it, you know what I mean, Teflon sips the thug mug, <laughs> I told the joint, that is what it, well, you will be extre extremely uh, high when this is all go going down and everything else, you know what I'm saying, uh, we do have a question right off the bat. Mod Mary said, what purpose does Tick actually serve? I, you know, so I think there's a couple of purposes that we, we, we can say that uh, that Tick will actually serve. So, but most more than anything, Tick serves the purpose. I mean, obviously, he's the hero of the story. Supposedly, he's the hero of the story. We think he's the hero. You know, it seems like it's his show. But, you know, it, it's it's all in the blood, and it's something to do with Tick's bloodline. Now, that also brings me up to a point that people keep saying. In one of my videos, I said that, you know, we talked about the sacrifice of Montrose, and I think that Montrose most likely will be sacrificed at the end when it's all said and done. And he will take Tick's place, and I said, because he has the same blood. Uh uh. So here we have a question that goes right into that right here from Val. Thank you, Val. Uh, and I said, yes, I do believe that Montrose will take the place of Tick. He will use a drink of the potion. And that is exactly how, you know, Montrose will die. Now, people are saying that it wouldn't work because Montrose is not Tick's real father. Well, people, if, if we're going this route with it, it wouldn't matter if George is his father or Montrose because they should have the exact same blood. From what I know, they have the exact same parents. They have the same mother and father. That's what I'm go going on. And if that's the case, then they have the exact same blood, just like I have the exact same blood as my brother and sister, right? That's just what it is. So unless the bloodline comes from Tick's mother. Now, if the bloodline that makes Tick special comes from his mother, then that's a different situation. But we we'll go back into these questions in one section. Let's talk about this last episode real quick. And which I got some screenshots here to show you and everything. So we got the Emmett Till 
murders here. And that's when we start off at the, the murder of Emmett Till. We we always touched on exactly what that was. And we see all our people out here at the, the murder. Please thumbs up the video at the funeral of Emmett Till's, right? And I wanted to show you a couple of things. Now, right here, when you look at this picture, you see the Christian, I would say Christian more than Catholic guy for the black people getting doing his things for um for the murder and then the next scene we see we see him again he's being interviewed right but we see the muslim people right here doing the thing from emmett tills no one's interviewing the muslim people you can look at the muslim people are far away but when you look at the christian people you can see there's a jewish rabbi standing next to him and they have the cameras next to them but you don't see that same thing going on with the Muslim people. And this shows you, especially back then, how Muslim people were treated and how they were always left out of being a, a leader of the black community because they did not want to precede them as leaders of the black community because they always thought that these people were too violent uh, too, too, and, and the Christian guys were always, you know, oh, just get along with everybody and we just march together and hold hands and the people spit on us and punch us in the face, turn the other cheek and keep marching. Well, the Muslim people were like that. They were just like, you know, oh, you go over here, you march with us and you hit us, we're going to hit you back <laughs> by any means necessary. But it just shows you exactly how they were doing that, how the Muslim people have no love right here, as you can see, only from love from the people. But we have the Jewish rabbi, over here being interviewed by the cameras with the Christian dude. And you can see the all the, the, uh, the other reporters, the white reporters and everything only around him, not even paying any attention to the Muslim brotherhood right here. All right, so we're going to come back here. We're going to keep going through that. You know what I mean? We're going to keep going through all that stuff. You know what I mean? And keep talking about this stuff. And that is and that is what it is. Uh, that That is why I'm here, Marie, so that we can pay, we, we can break down everything and we can and we can uh come together and and, and knock all this stuff out because you know when i do the the live stream with lmr and stuff when i do that um i'll put it like this when i'm talking more when i do the live stream with lmr i don't really have the chance to to really go through it you know i do it right after so I, it's a lot of stuff i catch but I, I don't catch and i can't show you because i don't have the pictures and stuff like that so that is what it is. Make sure you share the video and everything else, and that's what it is. <laughs> Mod Mary, the Muslim people look scary in that photo. Well, they're upset, you know. When you uh, 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 and when you're upset, they have every right to be upset. And I think sometimes it, it takes anger to get what you want in this country. Unfortunately, that's what it is. You know, you have to be angry to get everything else like that. Yeah, exactly. Marie Alexander says that right there, and I appreciate what she's saying. It's not anger. It's oh, super chat from Low Guardian Lady Bird. Thank you so much. Just because, cheer, cheer. You know, I appreciate that. You know what I mean. And that is what it is, and everything else. Uh, Sydney Taylor, she says, uh, I like the black Muslims. They should have been the leaders of the black community, like how Malcolm X was. Was I love Malcolm X a lot better than MLK, in my opinion. And I think a lot of people, see, that that's the whole thing. That's what, when dealing with history. That, that That's what history is always, you know, it's not, if you, it's not the same as when it really actually went down. Now, in history, they want you to remember Martin Luther King Jr., in a better light than Malcolm X because they agreed with his uh, uh, approach on things. And they mean, when I say they, I mean that the white community, they're the ones who agreed with his approach more because he worked with them mostly. Malcolm X wasn't working with them. They didn't want to work with Malcolm X. They were afraid of Malcolm X. They were afraid Malcolm X could start a revolution. And Martin Luther King, he was just like, listen, you know, I'll do what you guys want me to do as long as you try to give me what you get. And he took a different approach. It. I agree that I also uh, like Malcolm X better, especially his style. I liked his style better. And I liked everything that he that he uh, stood for and everything else. Uh, we got right here. Uh, Martin, uh, Maria Alexander, they both had the same goal, different approaches. Martin was radical, too. He was radical, but he was radical in a different way, you know, when we look at it. You know, he was willing to get arrested. 
he was more of the turn the other cheek. That's the biggest difference in them is he was turn the other cheek. And, 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 you know, and Malcolm X was like, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back, you know, and, and that's just what it is. So it, it, those were the two different approaches. And me personally, I'm on the, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Right. No one's spitting on me and no one's, I'm not into that stuff at all. I'm not into all that garbage. That's not happening to me. <laughs> that's just not the way I roll. I'm, I'm not that type of dude to get, get spit on it or anything else like that. All right. Let's go to another question. We're going to take another question here. I'm going to pull it up on my phone because I have so many here on my phone. We're going to pull this up. And I wish I had somebody here with me rocking. It's so much easier when I have someone here rocking with me, uh, especially to, to do questions so they can get their opinions on everything else and like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, future house for sure. Went back in time. The Korean lady. All right. Uh, Crow's red eye. He leaves a state. A crow red eye. A crow red eye. Good name. Says the Korean lady may sacrifice herself for a tick, but it's hard to say. Uh, the Korean lady may sacrifice herself for tick, but it's hard to say. I I have a picture of her. Let's see if we can we can pull a picture of her up. Uh, we'll have to go through all. But, uh, uh, you know, it's possible that she could sacrifice herself for Tick. I, I think that, you know what I mean? I, I think that when, when she's out there, there's no reason for her to have came back the way she came back, right? Because she didn't really do anything, right? When G.I. came back, what did she do? She didn't do a lot. So I think she has a bigger role to play. So I think that it's possible that she could sacrifice herself. Now, she's a spirit. Like, she's not a regular human or anything. She's a spirit. So what could she, how could she sacrifice herself for Tick? That, that's all that. What could she do to sacrifice? Who's going to want her blood? And why is her blood important to sacrifice for Tick? The importance of Tick is so that she, is so that she, Chris, meaning Christina, can go and become immortal. And she needs Tick's blood to do that. So how she could sacrifice herself to save Tick's blood. Now, if you're saying that she has Tick's blood inside of her because she put the technicals on him, if that's the case, maybe that is the case. You know what I mean? I'm not sure if that's the case, if she still does anything like that. But I do think she has to do something. Uh, Maria Exelen says, like, I mean, damn, she's got to do something. What was the point of coming? But, yeah, it seemed like she just came back to piss off Letty. <laughs> You know, it's because it, that's what it seems like right there. Little uh, garden, <laughs> lock garden bird lady says, on the other hand, the woman told a countless death. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's weird. You know what I mean? Uh, let's let's go through some of these comments and see it. See what else <laughs> they say. Ah, uh, Patless and Pugs area. Uh, what, what up to you with your little cute little puggy you holding up there? She put Atticus on blast. There's no doubt about that. She did. She she definitely put him on blast. And why would she do that? Why would she do that? I don't understand why she did that. I have no idea why she did that. Don Lee said uh, they said the lady's journey had just begun and there was going to be a lot of things in her future. True. So a lot of things in the future probably means she's not going to sacrifice herself, right? You know what I mean? That's what would probably mean it to me. Um uh, I believe G.I. will play a role in Tick's survival. Uh, hated the way Tick spoke to her. You know, he did sp speak down to her, but he was put in a bad position. But he did, you know, Tick, as we've seen in, from, the, from the stuff that happened at the war, you know, he, he's, not, he's not an all nice guy. He's not a very, you know, he's a great character and stuff. Uh, so he, but he did speak down to her there. There's no doubt about it. All right, let's, let's go back to some of these pictures and go through. What's going on? All right, so you see the mass gathering that we see here at, at, at Till's funeral for everyone that is there. And we see the ladies coming out and throwing up inside the bucket because it was Emmett's mo mother who decided on having an open casket because she wanted the world to see exactly what happened to her son. And he was so brutally murdered and so brutally beat up that it was hard. They couldn't even recognize him. The only reason she was able to recognize him was because of the ring that he was wearing. And obviously, we know that the guys who did kill him 
They got off on the all white jury, let them go. And because of double jeopardy, they confessed to the murder and wrote a book on it and got paid off it and was never able to be charged in that murder uh, that goes down. Now we see here, you know, when you when you when you when you looked here, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a symbolic thing when you see the people are uh, behind the fence, like behind the bar, still like being caged in. And that's just the way that black people feel at this time, that they are like animals, like they're being caged in at the same time. Uh, and that is just a, a general thought of how black people feel here about themselves. And we get our first look at D. Now, a lot of people said that D looks like she had the dress on from color purple. Now, the dress they are uh, referring to is the dress that Nettie was wearing. And the dress that N Nettie was wearing when she had to run, when she had to run away, when she when she was about to get raped by Mister, was trying to rape her. And I do think it's a similar dress, but it's not the exact same dress that she has on that 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 Nettie ha that Nettie had on. So not the lane the main character Whoopi Goldberg played her sister Nettie. That's what they're saying, and I understand exactly why. And you look at why she's got this white on. If you look at everyone now. Uh, I heard costume co say that it's not uh, common to dress little children in black, and that's why she's most likely in white. But I think you have a double entendre here with her being white and and her being innocent. And at this time, an innocent child who was about to face uh, a different type of innocence, uh, innocence about to be stolen from her, from what happened. She's going to lose herself being... Um, She's going to lose herself from being a um, from being a child at this particular time. You know what I mean? So I think that, <laughs> yeah, I got to go to school. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. As a line from the color purple, if people don't really know, yeah, the dresses do look like, amazingly similar. There's no doubt about it that they definitely do. I think it's quite possible they could have been influenced by it. All right, we see Tick and Letty there at the funeral, too. And, you know, Letty looking good as always, you know, to see with a veil. And she's got some black on her, not all black, a little bit black. And Tick, you know, I don't know what tickets he's closed for, but he does. And Montrose here, you can see Montrose chilling. He's got the peak lapel, and, and he's got the double, the double notches on both sides of the peak lapel, which I don't see a lot of. Nowadays, you usually only see one on one side. You don't really see two on both sides of the peak lapel. You don't usually see only the one on one. So at least the ones that I have only have one on one side. But it looks custom. It definitely, it definitely looks cu custom what Montrose is wearing here. And I know, you know, you know what? A lot of people, they, they, uh, they, they get, they, they give it Montrose a bad, bad uh, ribbon right now. You know what I mean and stuff like that. And I think he does deserve to get some of the badness that he's getting, but I think he's trying to turn it around. I think it, it could be going on like that. Uh, Val says right here that uh, white clothing used to be worn by children for funerals where I'm from. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that you don't you really probably don't dress a lot of children in black at funerals at that particular time and stuff like that. Uh, we have over here with uh, Priscilla Wright says, great analogy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Smoking crack and watching. <laughs> well, oh, smacking crack. Oh, <laughs> smack cracking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't hold the heck. I don't got my glasses on. Man. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> smack cracking and watching but i'm saying i thought it said smoking crack and watch i was like god damn you committed <laughs> if you doing that i'm sorry boys i'm sorry all right all right all right <laughs> I, you know, you know I'm playing. You know I'm just joking, man. <laughs> I'm just playing. I was saying I'm just playing. It's all slip of the tongue. LMR is right, and not that that other way. <laughs> yeah, good way. All right. Yeah, it's all right. So we get Tick Montrose still at the funeral. Letty Tick Montrose at the funeral, and they're deciding on what to do when we see 
And when we see D, they realize D has slipped away and went out on herself. And again, you can see again that this is the innocence that she is dealing with. You know, when you look at her and we see her from the window and we're looking at the, the window and, and the window was between her and the real world, right? So inside of this window, when we look at it, you can see what? You see toys, you see things that children would play with and everything else. And she's on the outside of that looking in. So basically trying to say that like, like you know, kind of like, like her innocence is, is gone. Her child, her being a child, those days where she could just be an innocent child walking around in the streets, hanging out, having a good time. You know what I mean? Those days are over. She's now, you know, forced to grow up early. And I think that happens to a lot of black children, especially. Uh, they're forced to grow up earlier than they should. They should have more of a childhood. Look, Michael Jackson will tell you that that was the one of the biggest problems in his life is that he was forced to grow up and become an adult so early. I had to be, uh, grow up very early on in my life. So uh, I definitely understand exactly why people say that and everything else like that. Uh, Ellie Nicole says uh, right here, it's like she can't go in, like she doesn't belong there anymore. You're exactly right. You know what I mean? That 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 that's the that's the feeling I have here when they show that picture. They're showing her looking from the outside, looking in. She wants to be back in when she was a kid but she can't be a kid anymore. She's just done. What up the AK-47 joining us right now? Like she can't be a kid anymore. You know, she, she's now uh, realizing what the real world is about. I, and you know what? Let me let me show you something too that, that, that looks kind of crazy here, but it, it is, I mean, if, if you it catch a, a good shot, you can see it. If you could see in the background, they have these crowns right here. I don't know if y'all can see it, but if I'm doing it right. I think I'm doing it. You could, you could with the point to see the crowns right here, the Zenus crowns. You could see the crown on a, it's kind of like on a head, kind of like, like, like the way the Biggie Smalls crown is, picture with the crown. It's kind of tilted to the side with the, with this crown. And that would be a good symbolism knowing that, you know, she would be the princess if you look at her mother as, as the Amazon queen and her as being Princess Diana. She would have that crown on her head. So it kind of looks like that that crown is on her head there, right there, and everything else. Uh, this uh, Val, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it says, uh, why is Tick and Letty waiting to tell each other? Why is Tick and Letty waiting to tell each other about the bit? I don't know <laughs> why, why they are going out there seeing that and stuff like that. Oh, like that. Oh, only go so you could see it. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, you know, you can try to see it. like the biggie small picture definitely is going down like that. Um, D is is realizing that grown ups do not tell all they know. I suppose she is the zenith of our generation. That is a great take. You could look at her too as the zenith of the generation, and that's why they have that in the in in the background. So I think all those analogies work perfectly fine with this and everything else. What up to everybody out here? We have 74 people watching us live. Now, I mean, I'm AK47, if you, I'm going to offer you an invitation to come on if you want to come on right now. Because I have gotten people have asked me to have uh, other people on and stuff like that. So, you know, if AK can come on, I'll, I'll ask her right now. We got 70 people watching. Maybe she wants to come on and say some stuff that she would like to say. We could add it to the stream. It's up to her and everything else, but she wants to go. Uh, what, let's what's this right here. Where are those two little girls in front of the shop? Uh, we have not gotten to that part yet. We are still we are still here on this part right now, but we are co closing in on that part right now while we're breaking this down. We're breaking down the episode and we're taking questions. So if you have any questions about anything, please put the questions up there and all that good stuff and uh. We will, we will keep it moving while we're going. All right, let's go on to the next picture. So we see D again. Look at her right here. And you have the gumballs down here, gumball machine. Her looking inside of the of the, of the, the children's candy store. And, you know, she's wishing that she could be a part of that life, but she is not a part of that life anymore. She has grown up right now while she is out there. Well, when you see... Whoop, 
The next scene, all right, is when we see the two girls outside, uh, sitting outside with the uh, gumballs, or the outside of the shop, and everything like that. I haven't gotten a, a, anything like that. All right, so AK is going to join us. So since she's going to join us, we, we're going to pause it right here on this thing, so that way she can come. But look at, let's look at what we see right here. Right, we see these two little girls, and these two little girls, I think, are, are what of I like the girls that start chasing her. All right, that that's what it is. Let's put that down like that. See, those are like the two girls that start chasing her. Those two girls, and I have a, a point to make about them. And I'm going to make this point about them. <laughs> but I'm going to see. Uh, uh, but but if you do look at them real quick, let's do it real quick. You can see that one is red, wearing red, and one is wearing blue, right? Red and blue. And what do red and blue represent, especially to black people? And we know red and blue represents a horror show, right? It's horror because when the red and blue come Usually red and blue means that's the police showing up, right? We all know back then that was the color of the cops lights were red and blue. And when they show up, it's not a good thing for black people. Usually it's not a good thing. They're supposed to be here to protect you, and but they're not here to protect black people. And we've seen that in this show countless times over and over. They ain't here to protect the black people in the show. So it's not a good thing for black people to see the red and blue and that's exactly what she's seeing out here is red and blue with these two girls and she does not and she particularly does not like it when she sees them you know what i mean and um she looks back at them and she sees them joking and again this is the world that she used to be in right she would be like one of these girls sitting there eating ice cream and obviously they're eating vanilla ice cream and we know that back then at that time maybe people don't know but back then at that time black people weren't allowed to eat vanilla ice cream every day it was not we were only allowed to eat vanilla ice cream certain times of the year and <laughs> we couldn't eat vanilla ice cream every day black people it was illegal to serve a black person vanilla ice cream right which is crazy i know that's crazy to even think about that that happened in the 40s or whatever or what it was but that's what america was you could not even serve a black person goddamn vanilla ass ice cream couldn't get it you know what i mean and you can see her in, her, in, in d's face right here like she's just fed up and i i love i love i love the way the what the way this actress portrayed herself and everything else you know what i mean and people like oh for sure it's like the popo for sure you're correct there's definitely a great they're definitely representing the police and the danger of the police and especially when the police come on after all this stuff you know what i mean uh, uh right here did you notice that only one girl actually attacked her? Yes, I did. You know, it was the one other, both two uh, uh, dancing, but it does not, it, do, it doesn't uh, seem, but it seems like a, uh, only one actually has the, has the things, uh, claws that grow up and start to attack her, attack them. Uh, we didn't like the popo back then. We don't like the popo now. <laughs> Let alone back then, you know, we don't we don't like my dad says <laughs> vanilla, though I like it, is the blandest flavor. It's I mean, it is. I mean, that's why you call vanilla vanilla, right? You I mean you call it vanilla because it's bland, because it's just eh, it's just vanilla. There's nothing special about it. But yet we were denied to have the no black people, you can't have vanilla ice cream. <laughs> You're not allowed to have vanilla ice cream. I you know, I love vanilla ice cream, but I would have been cool with it. I was like, give me that butter pecan, then, bro. <laughs> uh, and we have uh, Soap Nutty, Soap Nut Kathy. Oh, look at all these people. You have all these new people I think I see in here. Hopefully, y'all all subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. We do have another Netflix card gift giveaway one. I'm going to announce that on the, the Lady and Don podcast. We're going to do that on Sunday after Lovecraft Country. Remember, after Lovecraft Country, as soon immediately over 20 minutes after it's over, we do the live uh, review right after. So make sure that you definitely join us for that and everything else like that. But yeah, is that uh, that is a that's like a Team America doll right there. <laughs> Hopefully subscribe and and please uh hit the uh thumbs up button on that. All right, AK, this uh all right, hold on. Let me bring in AK. Let me see if I can do this real quick. Uh da, da, da. hold on, people. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. All right, that is sent there. That should be that. So she should be joining us in a second, which does we will add it to the stream, and then we will continue with everything else and stuff like that. These are all, I'm not new. I'm not new. I knew a name change. I've been following you for year for years. Well, well, thank you for following me for years. I appreciate it. Why well, change the name though? What happened? And you you had to go undercover. <laughs> um. Tara B says, is that some weak shit being denied vanilla? It sure is. You know, it's really just a form of control. This to say you can't have it. You know, that's what a lot of these things were. A lot of these things were just form of control to say, hey, you can't have this. And we're going to, because we don't want you to. And just, just try to keep, keep you down. You know what I mean? Just the little things that, that, that keep you down. And everything else. <laughs> uh Peter Griffith said I haven't gotten about I haven't thought of Team America for uh, a minute. Team America uh, F yeah. <laughs> I love Team America. I love Team I, I love that movie, Team America. That that movie is hilarious. And I'm gonna tell you that those I ain't gonna spoil nothing. I'm just gonna all I can say is that those puppets did more than I've ever done in my life. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, I'm gonna welcome in joining me live on Teflon TV for this stream and everything else. <laughs> is the one, the only Lord Commander of the hypes, the hypes watch, the Lord Commander of the community. Let's just say AK47. What is going on? What it do, my peoples? Hearty hello to everyone. What is that? Is that you Thanks for pulling me on you? tone. Are you ticking right now? All right, yeah. No, I went away for a second. It's a little staticky. Oh. Mm, hold on, let me check my sound components. Chat room, how's it coming through to y'all? Now you're good. Oh, sound like good. Yep. Now you're good. All now right. good. All right, so uh, yeah, I've obviously okay, you you've been there, so you know exactly what we're doing on this thing and everything oh, else. Sure, sure. Yeah, thank you, appreciate you for coming on and everything else. You know, with seeing you after you have any comments or things about Di uh, Diana in this scene a little bit leading up um, to these these girls, please let let them fly. And uh, right now she is just fed up. I mean, and and I can't blame her. You know, dad's gone, and you know she's still in her feelings about that. Uh, which she has every right to be. It really hasn't been that long. And now her mom's disappeared. Woody is back by uh, Letty's house. And now she knows for sure. Mom ain't on no guide trip. I mean, she lightweight saw through the bullshit from the beginning. You know, she really is her mother's daughter. Mm -hmm. And she, she, she's through with it. And she's acting on, on those feelings, lashing out. I can't blame the girl because I would be very, very frustrated as well. And also with everything that just happened, I'm sorry. I know the adults got their things going on, but they should still be putting extra effort into uh, taking care of this girl. They it's should be, take right? a lady. They, they should be more, more keeping a, keep an eye on her a little bit better. Like she mm -hmm. shouldn't have been able to get away. There's no she way in that crowd she should have disappeared. No, no way at all. There's no way she should have been able to get away from you and you should not paying attention enough to where she's actually, she's gone. You know what I mean? Exactly. And that, that's what it is. But as we see right here, this is when she's fed up. She starts, she's telling, and she tells him like, yo, what are you happy about? We, wh why do you have the right to be happy? All the signs in the store we see right here saying that store is closed because of em Emmett. And she just is bes beside herself. And so like, like as we see her, it's, it, and you, yeah, the dress really does look like look like Natty's dress, especially when you see it here. Yeah, that's that's the first thing I thought when I saw her in that. I mean, even down to the hairstyle. Yeah, um, yeah. She looks so she looks so much like the little girl that played Natty. She sure and does. I find it interesting that she's wearing white, while most everybody else is in black or dark colors. Yeah, that that it is so, strange. That, that, that stood out to me. Like that. And I think yeah, um, I, to. 
piggyback a little bit on what you were saying about those two little girls. I think something was definitely up with them because why would anyone, any child in that neighborhood right now be walking around eating ice cream? Wait, that why would that, sense. And why would that one store be open when every other store is closed? Why exactly. is this one ice cream store open out of all that? That's why I wish they would have showed the owners of this store. Yeah, because that, 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 that's, that's where the creepiness actually started, I think, for me in the episode. Because those little girls, they shouldn't have been there. Yeah, what I shout, I have to agree with you. Yeah. Next, we get her again looking back at the store with the gumballs. And here we have, we just seen the girls in red and blue. And now we get the real red and now blue. We get the real red and blue. We pull up on her and and all this and all this goddamn bullshit. What what you what you think about uh, Lancaster? And the Lan man, you know, I've been wanting to see Lancaster get get put away since like two minutes after we were introduced to him. He all might right. be taken care of now, but I, I I tend to agree with you um what you were saying in the after show. I don't think he's gone. I, I think there's going to be some magic tomfoolery and we'll see him again in one of the next two apps. But this yeah. whole thing right here, when they walked in, so first of all, she, D Diane is not a dumb child. She's actually, she, she, I think has the intelligence of her mom. You know, she is ahead of the curve on deducing things. Why did she go into the alley? That just yeah. it's like you it's like she took herself out of the the, the light where and walked into this dark alley. So of course the, the, the cops are gonna capitalize on that. I mean, I don't think Lancaster would have cared. I think he would have still done it in the middle of the street, but it just helped to add even more to what he was doing. Like she made it easy for him. Not victim blaming, don't take it that way. I know how that sounds, but I, I just it, she could have turned and walked. The other way, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would have followed her anyways. It just yeah. eh, dark alleys when when cops are up and and they yelling at you out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, she, it's she, very, she, she was she was in danger right there. Yeah, it's very suspicious that you know they happen to be looking for this one little black girl out of all the black girls in the town. Everyone just happened and to they be found her that girl, quick. And they found her, and she just happened to break away. They find her. That's why we have uh, E says spies. They stopped her long enough for Lancaster to pull over. Just for that reason, I could de definitely see how that's possible. And we see Lancaster mm. pulling her over and saying this spell that he puts on her. And he puts the same, you know, markings underneath her feet that Tick put the marking underneath his feet. It's the same exact markings that he uses to cast this spell. And we see the worms and everything else come up from her. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's horrific to see her as scared as she was. You know, mm -hmm. she just, you know, because she, 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 the emotions that this My girl is shot. ranging, it, it, her emotions are all over the place. You know, she's sad and yep. then she's angry. And then and she's immediately she fighting for her life. Yeah. Uh, all over the place, her emotions are. And now she got to deal with this bullshit. Exactly. And, I, and this is not, I can't even say that I'm surprised because I've seen this shit go down. I, I, I've been the one to have this shit go down, you know? Like you were saying earlier, yeah, we, we don't like cops, and there's a reason. Yeah, you know, a, a lot of people, they, 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 uh, and for good reason, it's usually highlighted a lot of times uh, with the the brutality that that black men uh, face to mm -hmm. to the police. But it goes on women too. Don't think yeah. black women don't get harassed, if not even more than black men that on the police. It usually goes so sideways with black men because they're so afraid of black men that they mm -hmm. couldn't shoot them, and that's what you hear about it. But black women get harassed just as much, especially back then when, when being stopped by the police and. Asked Indeed. to do unconscionable things. Indeed, yeah, it's uh, that that whole thing. I, I'll I'm, I'm thinking about the Ori right now, but I'll let that wait until we actually catch up to that scene. Mm -hmm. But with Lancaster, I I'm, I'm wondering first of all how he found her because you know this is the 50s. There's no database he can just pull her name up in the computer and pull up a profile or anything. Mm -hmm. So I would have liked to see the, the the group meeting that he had to where he actually even found what this little girl looked like and where he could find her. Because that, again, plot hole, that seems suspect to me. 
Yeah, it, it definitely is suspect. It's definitely either a plot hole or some magic shit. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's like Game of Thrones. You can always say it's some magic shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Just like all their fast travel that they pulled out them last. Exactly. So, uh, Tamara says she fell just. Uh, she fell. Fell. I can't say. God damn. Fell just like the scene in the color purple. Yeah, she did fall like the scene in the color. This is definitely the you know the, the daddy. She's definitely rocking Nettie's dress. There's, there's no doubt. I, I'm gonna go with that. You know what I mean? That it's Nettie's dress without a doubt. That's definitely Nettie's dress. And you know this show again. Uh, while they go through it, they show the cream of wheat thing and it, obviously you know this is exactly what we're going going through right now dealing with what answer my mrs butterworth and, and and uncle ben's and everything else and they show a couple of these things this season to show you know how black people were depicted and used for for to sell things and use the answer mima symbolism and everything else for us and the maid symbolism and the mammy symbolism and how it was used to, to, to sell products. I mean, there was whitey toothpaste, I remember back in the day where it was a pitch black guy smiling, you could see nothing but his teeth. You, they used to do that on a Little Rascals show all the time when Buckwheat would go into a cave and you, mm. could, you would only be able to see his eyes and his teeth while everybody else would be walking around and you see Buckwheat's teeth and eyes walking around the cave. Uh, a lot of things that they did like that. What, 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 how, you have anything to say about these, uh, these pitches that they used? Throughout oh, the show, all of them. Used this one they used a little earlier in a different episode. Yeah, I I can't stand them, but they're in there for a reason because it it needs to be shown. You know, it's one of those hard conversations that white America does not always like being reminded of. So I appreciate them putting it there in our face, but then again, at the same time, it makes me angrier than I, I already am about nonsense going on nowadays. Uh -huh. I have some right here. I have one right right on my. You head. got the old school promos. Yeah, I keep it right here. I keep it right here. I'll blow this up real quick so people can yeah, see. Yeah, toss it. that up. Right here. This is called mm. a, a yep. smoking a smoking sam samo. Smoking yep. samo is what it's called. I keep it right on the bar right there, and this was used to advertise cigarettes back in the day. And stuff, but I have that right here on on the bar. It's, it's right at the edge of the bar every time I, I keep them right there. But it's things like this. This is the same thing that's in that answer mm -hmm. picture. It's no different than this right here. You see the black eyes, red lips, little hat on his head, and everything else, pinstripe pants, and all that. And that's what it was called a smoking sambo. Mm. Sambo, I'm sorry, S smoking sambo, and everything else. So yeah, I keep that right at the edge of the bar. It's always there. It's always, there. I have more too. I have much, many more. I don't, uh, uh, here's one right here. A little black girl. You can see it uh, sitting on uh, a, a bi. All right, and you can see that the, the things in her hair are just like the girls that are chasing her. Yeah, uh, it's the same exact thing. With they all they have this hair, and it says on the bottom there. Uh, Go away, B. This ain't your hive. Go away, B. This ain't your hive. And, you know, I keep all this stuff. And you see it's the same thing that they have for girls. They did for guys. Same index thing. I have all these things. I keep them all close. And I always keep them because I always want to be reminded. You got to you gotta have that reminder. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. You have to have that reminder. But because that's always, once folks always. allow themselves to forget... We end up relapsing twenty damn years, like we have over the past four years. Oh, we got uh, Zimera. I never seen you. I, I can. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that last name, sweetheart. I'm truly not. <laughs> but thank you. I don't think I've seen you. A lot of people I haven't seen before. I, have you seen her before in there? I have not. Welcome, madam. Yeah, welcome. I, welcome. I cannot pronounce your last name, but I do like that spelling and I, I know that might sound weird but I, I i have a thing with names so when i see different type names that i don't see all the time i uh, give kudos to that yeah and she says her last name was on the comic it's not a long reach for a family for a family that's already on their mind for moving into a neighborhood that didn't that didn't want them I, I but could. but the freemans didn't move into that neighborhood that yeah. was late yeah yep yeah. what's uh, letty's not a freeman 
Yeah, there, there, there's no reason that I could think of that we've been shown that they would have the Freemans on their radar. You would add that unless they know so something. But thank you, thank you uh, for joining. Hopefully, you subscribe too. I hope you stay stick around. And everything else. Oh, she said she's new. Awesome, welcome. We love meeting new folks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully, you subscribe. You stick around. And everything else. We got a bunch of people up here in the chat. We're gonna go back to uh. Some of these stills that we were watching and, yeah, and, keep sure. on, and keep on moving, moving through them. All right. And here is a common theme that we see used. All right. Common. The chokehold. Right. We, we, mm-hmm. We've seen many, many uh, people getting a, the chokehold being applied to them. Yep. And now we see the same chokehold being applied to a little girl. And let me tell to you. A little this. girl. Little girl. And this man's spit was nasty. That 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 one just spit. I refuse to believe. You know, no, no one spit looks like that. I mean, I, I, honestly, now that I think about it, that just shows even more the corruption that whatever magic he's using has been has been done to his body. Yeah, you know, yeah. magic in itself isn't really always bad, but it's the person that is using it and the intent that they're using it with. That that's well, why they say you know there's good and bad magic. Eh, no, magic is just magic. These assholes using magic, you end up with globby, gross-looking body juices on your forehead. It's, ugh. Yeah, that was a big glob, you know, and 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 it's symbolic because you know, back in the day, you know, it, it used to be a big thing, like when people would make deals, they would spit in their hands to see. Yeah, it. yeah, and then shake hands, and then shake hands with the spit in their hand. I, you know, if you ever watched the Dukes of Hazard. Uncle Jesse would always do that with Boss Hog. Every time they make a deal, they say, "I'm a spitting, I'm a spitting, I'm a shaking, yeah. I'm a shaking." You know, and that they would always do that. But this was a thing that they did. They spit in their hands and shake hands. So you get some of that here with everything else. Oh, da, 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 da. yeah. I mean, and and this also just shows the uh, again highlights the excessive force that's always used. What's the most she was gonna do? Run away. That's what she tried to do. You didn't have to hem her up in that chokehold like that. Granted, you didn't need to be around her at all, but still excessive. It was definitely excessive. And I think that was the whole point of it, the show, mm. exactly how brutal these cops very are true. and they're willing to be, whether you're a young child or not. Now, this is a very interesting shot, and that's why I, I chose this shot right here, because when you look, you see a, a Nettie just meeting uh, Jiha, yeah, right? The yeah. first time. And you could see, like, the way this shot is shot is very interesting because you see Nettie in the one door and then Jiha in the other door. Like, they're on... No, mm-hmm. Jiha come all the way across the world. You know what I mean? And yeah, and now they're like, across the room. And they're right across the room, like, and they're still, like, in two different worlds. And really, like, the the, the this in the middle, it would be, like, tick right here. Yeah. But I just like the way that they shot that and they put the light, a lot of light on Jiha on that. And they put the light on Letty's back and the light in the face of Jiha. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that was done purposely uh, the way they put that out there. But I th- thought that was a, was a very good use of cam- camera ang- angles. And, and very good lighting. Yeah. I mean, and it's almost, it, it may be me, but it almost looks like in Letty's posture, like it automatically has clicked in her head. Who this woman is oh yeah so i mean i know i know folks were saying in the after show that tick didn't tell letty about gia no he did he just didn't go into extreme detail and there was never a reason that came up for him to really go into detail he said i had somebody in korea it ended really strangely which for him it did my man ran out the damn house butt ass naked I mean, what would you do when you land with a motherfucker and, and nine random ass tentacles? You can't tell nobody. No one, no one believes you. Yeah, exactly. For for what reason would he even want to relive that? He never planned on seeing her again. It's not his fault that she showed up. So I I I may may have been one of the minority of women that didn't think Letty had anything to be mad about. I I agree on that. What I doubt. Uh, we, we 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 jump cut to the the tomb, uh, where where Tick uh, meets up with Christina inside mm-hmm. the tomb, and this is where she she uses the dust 
of the tomb, the dust, the dirtiness of the tomb, kind of ancient, you know, by using yeah. the old, the, the, the show exactly how the, the right way to uh, to cast a spell. And listen, she, in, in, in this episode, it's like she, you, you giving her something if she giving you information, you know, it, it, like you, she gets something from everybody or, or every time. Christina was winning this episode, man. She definitely won. every every scene she was in, you know, this scene here would take and and she tick did stump her, tick did stump her a little bit. But like I've been saying from the beginning, Christina plays wizard's chest. You know, shout out to Harry Potter fans that caught that reference. She pays she plays wizard chess like two or three moves ahead of everybody else. Yes, she's been doing some dirty shit. Yes, she has her own motives. Yes, she's using everyone around her. But you gotta respect the game a little bit, honestly. You gotta respect, especially, you know, you, listen. You gotta respect the game for everything she's willing to achieve. She has been very calculated in everything she's done. And quite honestly, she hasn't really lied about anything she's omitted the truth on some things i'll give you that but she seems like a person she's one of those girls that likes to hurt people with the truth so when things start coming out she's very good at spinning it the way she needs to yeah tomorrow saying she's playing the game of thrones she definitely isn't she's yeah. playing it better than everybody yeah. else right now yeah <laughs> that, that that's that's word i agree with that completely you know, you know, you got, you got, you got, Christina was checkmate every uh, negotiation. She was right. right. You know, the thing about Christina is she's a, she's a boss. You know, she may be frail. She may she's look been around skinny. for some centuries, y'all. Yeah, like she's a boss, and mm -hmm. she she and, and she lets that show. Like she's not one to be messed with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even when she said when she went to Tick and Tick tried to shoot her, she was like, "Yo." Don't go try to don't be smart. Oh, you, you gotta be smarter than this, cousin. Yeah. You come gotta be now. smart. Come on, use your head. Use your head. So you're gonna shoot a random white girl. Come on, in broad stupid? daylight. You know what I mean? Are you stupid? You're trying you got... to bring no silencer or nothing for that pistol. You wouldn't have been able to just walk away and go to nobody's train station, my dude. What are you what are you thinking? Exactly. They would you'd have been hung up, boy, and strung up. And that's just the bottom line without a shower with that. Uh, Bernadette Baker. This is not our Bernadette, right? That's not Bernie Bernadette. It's a different Bernadette. Bernie. There's nothing no, to respect. No, 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 no. That ain't beefing. Oh, all right. It's a different Bernadette. I don't think so. All right, all right. That's a different Bernadette. Uh, it says there's nothing to respect. She's evil. She's a devil. I mean, you have to respect, respect, the, way she's re playing? respect the game. She says she's not a boss. She's evil. She's evil, boss. Yeah, she is. She's still a boss. But I mean, she, I, and I, she's I, making it do what it do. That's that's all I'm saying. She is a boss. She's a boss. Listen, you, you, there's, there's evil people who are bosses. You can go through the history mm -hmm. of it, you know, whether it's a monster is boss with it. and everything. But all of uh, Vlad, uh, the Impaler was a boss. He was as evil as the Giddy Impale people. Yep. You know what I mean? But he was a boss. You didn't mess with him. How many kings are out there you can consider bosses that, that did disgusting, horrible things? She's definitely a boss. You know what I mean? And she puts it out there that she's a boss. And she puts it out there that she's in control because they all need something from her. Mm -hmm. And she needs something from her, them, but it makes them, she makes it seem like you need her more than she needs them. And that's yeah. the way it seems, the, the way the way she does it all the time. You know what I mean? I mean, like I said, she's very good at manipulating the situations. And I almost want to say she's a good wordsmith. And when I say that, <clears throat> that means like she can take the truth of any situation and make sure she spins that narrative the exact way she needs it to hit. Mm-hmm. I'm with you all the time. Uh, right here, we got Taff. We got, that's a new person too, right, Taff? Taffy, I don't think I've seen your name. Oh, look at these icons in here, man. We got yeah. the beautiful ladies in this chat room. Oh, we sure do. We what here up, for y'all. <laughs> what up, <laughs> Taffy? We're happy to see you. Hopefully you Welcome. subscribe and stick around. Because you um you always lose if you don't respect an opponent that strong. And you are exactly you right. can't you underestimate to, them. Yep. Never underestimate anybody in life. 
or, or you get defeated. You know, you can never go in and look look at Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas. You can look in boxing matches, uh, with and I think boxing matches is the best place to look because that's where you see people get knocked out when they underestimate people. You can always see people mm -hmm. looking, and, and a lot of things in boxing will tell you they look past that opponent to the next opponent. Like this, they have a big fight set up, and this is a tune-up fight, and they go in there not even thinking about it, and then they wind up getting knocked out, and that's exactly what happens here and everything. Thank you for you got another divine angel. Uh, that, that's the new name it looks like to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen that name before. We welcome, welcome. Cover, we got cover girl forty four. I've been here. That is what's up. You have some people? cheekbones, my my my, my good lady. Oh yeah. Welcome. If her plan ever goes off track, she's going to lose it. <laughs> Beware. No mm. doubt about it. it but right no now. No doubt at all. Oh, yeah. There, there, there will be hell to pay if something does go wrong. And, and I think something big is going to is definitely going to go wrong. Yeah, Susan Little says, Tick saw the future. He is playing Christina. So we, the future that Tick saw, let's, let's be clear of what he saw. Yeah. He, he didn't, didn't really see much. see anything. Because the lady handed him the book and pushed him out, he said. And pushed him right back out the portal. Yep. So he, he's reading what's in that book, and he's dissecting, but he didn't see the actual future. Yeah, the only thing he saw was white people riding, which makes me think he got to 2020. And whoever was there knew he was coming, and they knew that they, they needed to be there to give him that book and yep. get him the hell out of there. And if you want to say... It could be the long game that that person was working. It's, it's possible that person was working for Christina. They did it on purpose. You'd have no idea. Now that is an angle I did not think about. My my first thought after watching the trailer was that it could possibly be Diana. The age range would still fit. Yeah, but, it, it, I don't, it, Christina could have some agents in there. I mean, like I said, the chick is a, a few centuries old. Don't let that young did. face fool you. Yeah, well, they say that, that she was able to, to achieve immortality, so she would still be alive at that particular time. And she was there. But that's my brother, Fernandez. T is always Hey, always what's good, Fernandez? No, she right. doesn't have the immortality yet. She has invulnerability. You know, it, the book says that she achieved it. She, yeah, yeah, that she's going to achieve it by killing Tick. By killing Tick. So yeah. that, that's that's what we know here. Let's go to the next picture here that we got. Obviously, another picture of Christina. And, you know, she looked good this episode. I think her dresses look good. Her hair looked good. And I, I, one thing I'll say about these things is that they do light black people. They do a good job with the lighting. They're very like, good on the lighting, yeah. And, you, and know, you know, people may not notice, but that is a hard thing to do with melanated folks mm -hmm. is to get the lighting right. Exactly. Especially if they don't want, you know, a lot of people don't work with black people. Don't, you know, it, it's just like black hair, right? You, mm. just, you just can't yep. go into any beauty. If you shop don't know how to do it, then you shop. should not touch it. Exactly. And that's the way it is with lighting black people. You got to know how to light. And that's how you know you have black people, a black woman who is holding this show down. You know what I mean? Misha directed this episode, didn't she? Did she direct this episode? I think uh, somebody jump on Google and look that up for me, please. I do believe I, I heard that, that that she directed this episode. I'm gonna interview Misha. I'm gonna get her on here. I'm gonna get Misha. I'm not playing, man. No, nah, I feel you. you. You know what? Um, I'm gonna get her. I don't I'm know if you've her. heard of the Pay or Wait channel. Who is this? That is run by um a girl named named uh, Sharonda. Another black YouTuber out here doing all the good things. She's um, recently started getting um, interviews with a lot of folks. Actually, I think she has some interviews coming up that she's going to be posted soon with the cast. Nice. Uh, nice. Press. So it, it, maybe if you want to reach out to her and try mm. to collab, might get might help get the hookup. Just a thought. I think my channel's big enough that I, I could I could I could pull some people up in here. I'm you know, not saying you couldn't do it on your own. Just just a thought to make it easier. Oh no, no, I'm not saying that. I will definitely. I think that you know, I, I don't know what they look for to what they look for to go on right. channels that they look at subscriber count or view count, whether they do it or not, and everything else like that. But uh, oh, Queen RN says that she did direct. Thank you, Queen. Appreciate that. Oh, she did. She did. Queen Orange. Yeah, she did. Direct. Well, she directed the best e episode of the year, I think. I think yeah, you know what? Every episode, as I see it, becomes my favorite over the, over the previous episode. Yeah, this one was definitely. And my this favorite. one, while it creeped me out to no hell, oof, I I, I, didn't, I didn't even really get any sleep Sunday night. I can usually deal with horror and creepy, but when you throw creepy uh, children looking uh, demons around, yeah. 
that's that that that's a sleepless night for me. And thank you, Divine Angel, for the super chat. This is Montrose and her. This is her, you know, getting that Montrose. You know what I mean? Getting that Montrose, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what's going on in her life and everything else. And the next scene is her wiping, you know, the spit off. And, and you know, trying to, you know, it, it's you know, it's like that feeling. I would say that I I see like 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 um. I don't try to compare it to it, but it's kind of like it's kind of like when you know when something terrible happens to a woman, say something terrible happened to a woman, and they just try to wash their body to wash it mm-hmm. all away. Like mm-hmm. they just try to get rid of it. Like say you was with you know something happened with some man and you didn't want to happen. They just go in and you just scrub yourself and just like try to scrub yourself clean. That that's what it seemed like she was doing in this scene. Like she was just trying to really just why get everything everything out of her. All the horrors that happened to her day and, and the spit on the forehead was just the last straw. Yeah. And she wanted that washed away too. Like she could just wash her problems away. You know, kind of like that commercial back in the day, Calgon. Calgon, take me away. That, 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 that's what it seems like. Uh-huh. Right and you know what? I, I will give a little bit of kudos, excuse me, to Montrose because he was trying to talk to her. You know, he said, you know, they, they took my best friend away from me, too, when I, when I was a kid. But then he goes off into being Montrose again. He just starts yelling. Like, dude, if you know what she's going through, like you just said, lower your damn tone, man. Baby girl is in serious need of a fucking hug and mm-hmm. answers. And you, you're one of the main ones that always said, you know, don't, don't tell them nothing. That's not going to work anymore, Montrose. And this isn't just some random girl. This is this is your blood, man. This is your niece. Do better. Yeah, I think that Montrose has a, a doesn't know how to express himself that way. I think you know some people get caught up. I, I, I'll say it's like 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 my father. I love my father, and I was with my father. You know, I love my dad and everything else. But I can tell you, I I it's hard for me to even remember a time as an adult that I hugged my father. Mm. But like I specifically remember a time that. Uh, you know, he, I went to, I was at my grandmother's house, his mother, and he was there and I met him and he put his hand out and I shook his hand. <laughs> and I remember her saying, Wayne, that's your son. You should hug your son. And he was like, no, we men, we shake hands, you know, and that's just <laughs> what he was, you know what I mean? At that time in his life. Yeah, and that's that's, who that's he how was. a lot of fathers were back in the day, you know, and, and didn't, and I think Montrose is in that, in that category. Thank you, Fernandez T, for the super chat. Exactly, AK. I love how they show different cultures. Scary shit. Those kids were creepy. <laughs> we are going to get to them kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell y'all the story when we get there. Oof, them damn kids. You know, but that, I think it was a, a situation like that. I think Montrose is just stuck in that. You know, it, it, you know he doesn't like, know how to evolve. Doesn't. And I don't, I don't like that. And, you know, I know when him and Tick were talking, you know, he was like, you know, I'll, I'll do what I have to do to protect my son, too. I think he, he is coming around, and I do think he's definitely going to play a part in uh, putting a wrench in Christina's plans. But, oh, uh, it's just, it's, just, it's it, I just can't with Montrose. No. Well, it's, it's like, it's like, it's just like it, like, like getting whoopings, right? I got the shit kicked out of me when I was mm-hmm. young. You same. know what I mean? And I'm going to assume that my parents got the same thing. You know yep. what I mean? When they were young and they yep. moved it now, me, I took it like I'm not doing that to my child because I know exactly how that felt. But they took it like I'm doing this because this is the way I was raised and I'm continuing it. You know, yeah. so you, I don't think they got to that. Well, like like my generation, I think, is a generation that stopped beating their kids. Right. I think I think we stopped that whole thing, and now kids don't, don't get beat. But then you'll hear people say these kids act so bad they should be getting beat. That's why they act the way they act, you know. Well, not see, and, and that's the thing with, with at least for for me and like my cousins with the kids that are in our family. If a smack or a few smacks are warranted, yes, you will absolutely get that. Especially if you got a smart ass mouth. We don't we don't do smart ass churn in my family. But if it gets to a point to where you just beating and swinging that belt just to be swinging the belt, if you beating little Johnny over the head with frying pan every day, no, that that that's abuse, and you need to not. Not saying you shouldn't discipline your kids, definitely, but in it it doesn't have to be extremely harsh. Yeah, you know, and that, that, it, it it look it was wrong, 
and everything else. It was wrong when I got hit and everything else. And I remember how it made me feel and everything else. And I couldn't stand it. But I, you know, I it was just, I got whooped. I used to get whooped. It wasn't even like I got hit one. I used to get whooped. Extension mm -hmm. cords. I mean, everyone knows. Extension oh, yeah. cords outside. My grandmother go to the tree and pull a switch off the tree and hit me with the switch. I had to go pick my own switch. You know what I mean? That I was going to pick the wrong one. Yeah, you, you don't know which one to pick because the skinny ones are, are quick and whip you, and the thick ones are uh, smacking hard. So heavy as hell, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's just the biggest torture of them all when they when you have to go out there and pick, <laughs> choose the instrument. So yeah, go choose the instrument. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's that's how it was. I mean, and like just to think about my family, man. You know, we're we're West Indian. You know, my, my mom, my aunts, my dad, they all grew up in South America. It, I don't know what the rules are today, but when they were growing up, there was no such thing as child abuse in Guyana. If you fuck up and you call yourself wanting to run away from home, whatever friend of your parents finds you is going to beat your ass. And then they're going to take you home and you won't get another ass whooping. Mm -hmm. and ain't nobody going to say shit. That happened to my, my, my other mother, I call her Sylvia, my other mother. I mean, when I was little and she hit me and she beat and she hit me and everything. And I was like, I'm telling my mother when she gets here because she was babysitting me. That ain't gonna matter. And, and then I went there, I remember my mom came through the door and I ran to her and I was like, Sylvia hit me. Blah, blah, blah. And then my mom hit me. Bow, what you do to make what it? What you do? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn. I mm -hmm. like, you should have known better, man. And she was like, that's your other mother. And if she's hitting you, that means you doing wrong. She mm -hmm. ain't just going to do that. And that was it. And I was like, oh, my God. That, exactly. 100%. At Divide Age, so I, I only had the belt. The belt was a given. <laughs> yeah, the belt was a given. The belt was a given. It would be like, you, you, were, you were lucky if you only got the belt. It's all the <laughs> other shit. How many wooden spoons my mom broke? Uh, yeah. Me and my sister, man. They would definitely get you with that. All mm -hmm. right, we, we move on here to, to the Uncle Tom's Cabin Ooh, book that, that, that gets us to the thing. And, you know, everyone knows Uncle Tom's Cabin. That's two different meanings. So Uncle Tom's Cabin was a book that was written, and it was it's usually it was used to make people <laughs> in, the, in the North understand exactly how bad slavery was. It was a best-selling book back then, and it really helped you know, promote the Civil War and make people believe that it was a bad thing for slavery. But and then there's an Uncle Tom who people call Uncle Tom. And those are people that that side like the House Negro uh, is an Uncle Tom. So it took on a different meaning in the black community than actually what the book was uh, meant to do and what the book right. did. And from the and we and we get from the, the second one, we get the uh, we get the uh, Uncle Tom uh, the girl chains to one of the mm -hmm. demons. Yeah, that as soon as I saw that, I said, "Oh no, D is about to be in some serious shit." Yeah, <laughs> I doubt. Hey, I mean, then that damn song started playing, and Montrose ass over there, legit trying to y yell at this little girl and banging on the damn door, like <sighs> my guy. You're not going to do anything, but what you always do is push people away. And what happened? She ran out the window. Mm-hmm. Uh, D, D crafty. <laughs> well, she got to go. She, go. <laughs> yeah. she was not. She. I told you she was frustrated and she was done with the bullshit. She needed some fresh air, so she had to go back out. Yep, and everyone knows about escaping through the window back in death. That was mm -hmm. the great way. Here we are, and, I, and this is a very difficult scene. But I, you know, I, I break it down the way I feel. I don't know if you feel the same. We'll see. Right, but, go for it. Go for it. You pull it out first. Again, we see Letty. i uh, not Letty. We see Ruby here. She gets accosted by this white guy. <laughs> and again, William is playing the white savior. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, that that's what people have problems with is this whole situation because look, she just came from a funeral where a young black boy was murdered by two white guys. Mm -hmm. Yet she ran to the arms of a white man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. why would she? Why would you do that? And I think that's her biggest frustration and her, her biggest thing with, with, in dealing with the situation is, is is that 
that's where she wanted to be in the end. She wanted to be in the arms of this white man, even though that she knows exactly what happened to this young boy. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, and Ruby is also in that same situation that Diana is in. She's frustrated and she is really through over the nonsense. She needed some type of, you know, some random version of safety and security. And, you know, they, people might not like it, but to stay on the South Side with everything that was going on, she wasn't going to get any type of peace there. And she knew that. But she does still have that guilt to where this is where I came. So yeah. when she said, and you know, that, you know, she, she didn't want to be uh, in her own skin fucking a white man, I totally understand where her headspace was. It's that catch-22. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like, you need to be away from the bullshit. You need a break. You need to be able to forget this extremely traumatic thing that just happened. But the way you have to go about doing that, uh, it, it it isn't right, but she also isn't wrong, if that makes sense. Yeah, you, you can't, you can never judge someone else's opinion unless you're living in that person's shoes. And you don't know, is, is she obviously she has feelings for, you know, and, and that, 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 that's, that's, uh, different that that we can definitely go into that. Who does she truly have feelings? And people say she has feelings for William, you know, but you know she never met William. No, it, it it it's both. I mean, first of all, Chrysilium is just one person. They they have you know two two different bodies, but it is still that same person. Mm -hmm. It's still Christina. Ruby knows this, and she's still there, and that's another thing that's playing in her in her uh, subconscious. You know, mm -hmm. but I told y'all, you know, if, if y'all watch my videos, Rue Chrysilium is a thing, you know, and it's going to be, it, well, it's already messy, <clears throat> but you know, like in every sense of the word, it's already messy, oh, yeah. but moving forward, it's going to be even more messier. And I, I don't, I'm a strange individual. I find watching their train wreck of a relationship to be fascinating and I ship it. So I am here to see all of the random drama that I know is going to happen. And I, I want to see how, how they're actually going to deal with that. Because I genuinely think Christina has some, she has some feelings for Ruby. I don't think it's just in her William persona. I think that's her. Like she said, the words came out of William's mouth, but they were mine. She owned that shit. No doubt about it. And Susan Little says the phrase growed like Topsy, later grew like Topsy passed into the English language originally with the specific meaning of unplanting growth. And later, later sometimes just the meaning of enormous growth. Hmm. You know, I I feel like, you know, it it's 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 a catch 22 with Ruby. Yeah. Ruby's more honest with herself than any other character on the show. I could see how people see that, but I could see why people would say why would she run into the arms of this person after dealing with what she's dealing with? Uh, someone just said that Ruby uh, wanted to escape escape uh, the, the troubles going on, on the other side. Yeah. She wanted to get away from it all. And it, it could just be that she just wanted to get away from it all. But it and, it, and when you see her and she says, and she's like, you know, she's like, you know, I, I didn't want to be a black woman sleeping with a white man. Well, in all honesty, you're not sleeping with a white man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're sleeping with, with a glamored white woman. Yeah. And you know that's exactly what you're doing. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The shit, the, the shit is messy. But I'm here for it. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know why. It just seems fitting for me. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think that's what you have to You really look at it, too, that, that you know... Um, that's what it's meant to be because it's meant to be, you know, how she felt about what she was doing. It was dirty. She felt dirty. She felt uh, yeah. she felt bad about doing it, but she still wanted. And there's a lot of things you may feel bad about doing in your life and you still do them anyway. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's the same type of situation going on here. It was dirty what she was doing. She didn't feel like she didn't want to be herself. She, she didn't. It's, it's like this. Uh, how can I explain? It's like, you know, how like you go out to a club. Or someone will go to a club 
and then so you'll meet some chick and everything else and you sleep with the chick and then some of your friends will see hey you slept with that chick I'm like man i was drunk when i did that i wasn't you know but you knew what you was doing uh -huh. but you had to have something to blame it on that that's basically what you use the white skin for and everything else but yeah you know, that's why you, when you see her come out of a skin she could pretend that it was someone else doing it but in the end we see this is what you wanted to do. This is who you are, and this is what you what where you really wanted to be. And I think that she uh she 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 got mad at herself mm -hmm. for, for for feeling the way she feels. And it, if you you know think back to when she first uh, was given that potion at the end of her workday, she wouldn't let Chrysilium kiss her in in that skin. Because she wanted to know that Chris Ealing was actually feeling her for being herself. But now here, we have the opposite. Mm -hmm. and, so and it's, it's interesting and, to watch. And, and, and when you say, when I, like I said, like I said, like she's the boss, Chris mm -hmm. Here's another boss move she did. You know, not only did she fuck this woman, all right? But then this lady goes and tells her, like, yo, you she should- her for filth. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, she's like, you should feel bad about what was going on. You should feel terrible that this boy died. You should. She's like, listen, I don't feel nothing. Yep. And you just feel bad because you came your ass over here to me, mm -hmm. and he straight checked her in her face. That's what I'm saying. Christina likes to hurt people with the truth. And that's it. And she told her, like, listen, and, and she, she, and she's right. She has never lied to Ruby about anything. She mm -hmm. told her exactly what she was about from Jump Street. The only secret she ever had was that she was William. But that's out the bag now, and Ruby's still there. Exactly, exactly. Ruby is okay with her own actions. She can reflect on her own. Christina's a fool. <laughs> she thinks Ruby needs a uh, little. I, Susan Littles, hate it's a hate. Christina <laughs> hater. <laughs> Let's just put that out there. Hey, no, man, look, I, I can't blame her. No, Christina is a villain. You know, don't don't get it wrong. She is a villain, and I do not want her to win. I'm just saying, the way she's going about doing things, it's extremely interesting to watch. And uh, Tamara, I think you might be right. Ruby and, um, is is developing an addiction. You know, she wants that power still to be able to go and do what she wants when she wants mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it. now whether there's the actual drink that she's taking is addicting i don't know but she could just be for the power but maybe it's addicting maybe it's some type of thing and it could be like some situation like that john had making sense of the truth the truth hurts you know yeah. sometimes you know you you see you see a lot of people who who don't live their truth and Mm -hmm. We see this throughout this show, uh, Montrose, right? He it's the yeah. same, it's the same thing going on there with Montrose his whole life. Now we, we get a definition, we'll talk about that when we get there, but it's the same thing going on with Montrose that's going on with, with, with her with her. And I think that Christina checked her like a boss right in her she, face. She did. She read her for filth, and again, she told nothing but the truth. And oh, Ruby, and you can tell by the look on Ruby's face, she knows. She's being hit with with with, with the one, one two you know ko. Yeah, and there's nothing you can say about she, it. She has to be able to deal with that herself, and that's what her conflict is. She's pissed at herself for being there, so she's trying to project some of that anger on Christina. You know that both of them are using each other for something, but right. at the same time, right. Right. there are still feelings there that they're gonna have to really deal with coming up very soon. All right, I'm going to say this one time. I have not read the books, so do not put any spoilers from the books in this chat, please. All yeah, right? I have not read the book either. A I've lot of people <laughs> haven't. We don't want to read the book. I don't, I don't want to have to put you on timeout. I appreciate that you have read the book. Listen, I, I, was, I did Game of Thrones, right? And I read all the books. So I know how tempting it is to tell people the show mm -hmm. what's going on. Oh, what's different. I know, I I know how it is, but I, I I respectfully ask 
if you did read the books, please do not put anything from the books in here because we just want to try to figure this out on our own. That's right. that, that's that's what the um that's what we like about it. All right. So yeah, and I did that. I downloaded the audio book the other day, but I didn't allow myself to go past the second chapter because all of that happened already, um, in the show. So actually, I I actually downloaded it. Two episodes. I, that's when I'll go back after the season's over. I actually downloaded the book myself because I was going to lose a credit and I had needed to use a credit, so I downloaded <laughs> the book. But I have no intention on on on, on reading it at all, listening to it at all. In all honesty. All right, we got you got GI and listen. When you deal with GI, and this is when Tick comes through the door and he comes through the door, he knows it's her because he sees the shoes outside and, and the culture, you know, in. Chinese custom, you know, I I oh, grew up with it myself personally that you know that that that's what you had to do when you go inside the crib and everything. But he knew the culture that the Chinese people with the shoes off and everything else. So he knew exactly what was going on and what he was walking into. And yeah. again, she she's a beautiful woman. You know, that's why I let, that's why Letty is is so upset because Letty like this chick. It's not it's a hot it's a hot ace. Right, right. Let, Letty over there looking like hold the fuck on Mulan. Didn't nobody ask you to come over here? <laughs> and, and I call her Mulan for y'all that don't know. Jamie Chung played the character Mulan in Once Upon a Time way back in the day, and so that's why. And she did a hell of a fucking job playing her too. So that's why a lot of times I don't call her by her name. I just call her Mulan. We got another new name here to view the rum eye. View the rum eye. What up? I hope well up to you. Thank welcome. Yes, welcome. Actually, welcome. Um, welcome. Thank All you right. for that. It's so, Korean culture, but I will say a lot of Asian cultures have that same tradition. Japanese, Chinese, Korean, um, Thai. All of them usually take their shoes off before. Yeah, they it, I I cannot believe it. it's just it's not just uh Asian culture, uh, uh, Korean culture. Uh, you could you could see that it, it, uh, Mr. If you, <laughs> I'll say Mr. Miyagi. If you want to look at that, and you look at that, and Daniel Sun and all of them, they yep. always take the shoes off every time they yep. inside the dojo and everything else. This, this is what it was. This is just a, it's what they it's, do. Yep. It's more of an Asian thing more than just a, a straight Korean thing. I have yeah. a lot of Korean friends I grew up with, especially in Queens, New York. Anyone knows Queens, New York knows it's loaded with Korean people and everything else, but mm -hmm. it's more of an Asian thing than just a, a one religion thing. Uh, for Korean people, and you know, she's a very beautiful woman, as as we could see here. Her eyes are gorgeous. Yeah, she's, a, she's a, and, and this chick, you know, <laughs> letty, 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 letty. And I would say, let me let me go back. You know, she doesn't really come off with come off with anything. Like she she no. comes, she tells who she is. She does all this, she, and but, she's very calm, telling the story. She is. But she doesn't do anything. She doesn't help in any way. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. Like, okay, you're there. You love him. I get it. You were worried. However, what made you think this was a good idea if this is the angle that they're going to be on? Now, I, when after the whole um, uh, Ninetale Fox episode, I did kind of want her to go to Chicago because, you know, magical creature against you know, the, these motherfuckers with magic and people that are just now learning magic, she could help. Could she? I don't even but, know if she could be I, I just didn't want to see the, the uh, you know, the three-way angry, jealous love triangle. And that's kind of what they're setting up. And I, we have enough drama in the show. We didn't need that. And I, I can't yeah. believe that they would bring her back for just this, what, 10 minutes worth of a scene? No. They didn't give but her a gotta full, be something else coming. They gave her a full episode. Yeah, uh, uh, for her, for Something a reason. With her, yeah, for a reason. They made she is the the, the alien that he sees in the first episode. Mm -hmm. She's there, covered so, in blood. So they're not going to give you a full episode and make you one of the first people that he sees in the, when the show begins. Just for that, there's something else is going to happen with her. Susan Little, <laughs> okay. Susan Little, I love you. All right, I love you. answers and nothing, and that and that's true. That's facts. You know, I I was not mad at Tick when he said, "You don't have any new information to give me. What? What? Why, why are you here?" I wasn't mad at him for saying that, and and yeah, that might have broke her heart a little bit. You know, a lady's the one that called it out because she loves you. Okay, I get that, but you can't fault this man for being upset. He didn't tell his ex girlfriend to come here. Mm-hmm. You know, that. that whole conversation and all of the random anger just eh, 
they, they, they didn't need to have that in there. I think they could have done that a lot smoother, but this is the road they chose to take. Rashada Nelson, how we got a bunch of people up in here chilling with us. We got Howard. I feel like I've seen your name before, but I don't remember where. I don't think it was in the Teflon stream. Oh well, I'm glad what everybody said make, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Yeah, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you you subscribe to the channel and everything. And that's how we keep it popping. That's how we keep people going on in here and sure. stuff. Let, Letty, hey, hold on, real quick, Tom. Let me go uh, grab another beer, real quick, please. All right, I'll, I'll go you through it. Me. All right, if people y'all got any questions, you know, I'm he, that's what this really is a Q and A. I have a bunch of questions. I could pull them up on the chat and everything else and all that. Uh, Susan Little, uh, she says uh, they said 100, so I'm confused on that part. 100 men uh, that she killed. She supposedly killed one. See, so that's very confusing too because you think that. When she killed 100 people, that the girl would be released out of, and she would go back. She said that she did fulfill that prophecy. So why is she, the spirit, still in that girl's body? How come the girl didn't come back? That would be my issue with that. Why? What happened? Because she's supposed to kill the hundred men, and then she's supposed to leave the body, the fox, and then the girl's supposed to come back. But the girl didn't come back. It's still the fox inside that body. And she said she killed the hundred person. So maybe it has something to do with the mother. Maybe she killed the mother instead of the hundred person. Maybe that's the hundred person was the mother. It's it's our we'll, we'll get AK still um so it's on it. I, I I it's not the soul, Susan, because she was killing men, but uh, no, I'm sorry, because she was killing men. You know, so she specifically was killing the men. So it wasn't like she was out there killing, killing women. So, it, you know what I mean? So it could have been something different. Because if that was the case, why didn't she just seduce a couple of women and bring the women back there? The mother of G.I. specifically said, you have to bring men back here. You need to bring men. Right. So it wasn't just souls. It was man, men souls that she had to bring back there. And she needed a hundred men soul, man souls. I say men souls. <laughs> she needed a hundred man souls to fulfill the prophecy, right? So that that's where we're, where we're hanging up here. That so it, it does seem a little bit weird. Exactly what's going on? Everything else or, or with all that stuff. Listen, we have over one hundred and eighteen people here. I truly appreciate. It. You know, I did this midstream to see. You know how people, how this would go. I didn't know how many people I would get here or anything else like that. But I wanted to see if people were into Lovecraft that much that they wanted to talk about it midweek, not just on Sunday. Because I want to talk about it every day. <laughs> every day. You know, um, sp speaking of that, on the real, like right when you were uh, you sent out the invite, I was actually getting ready to listen to another podcast, do their breakdown, and he usually streams on Thursdays. Oh yeah, who's that? But I was like, no, let me, let me, let me go hang on my boy Tom. Let's see. What's going on. There you go. Because you go. usually aren't here Thursday night, so I had to see. What no, you no, I used, I, I, it, it was it was just a, a trial to see if it if it flew, you know, to see if people would actually show up, and they did, I, and, I, and full force. Young man, have you met you? <laughs> I'm just saying, you Teflon starts streaming. You think folks ain't gonna show up? Stop that! Cut it out right now. Well, I'm just, this is this is a new crowd. I love this crowd. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. We do got a lot of new folks that keep coming in because of our Lovecraft discussions, and I appreciate it. Y'all, y'all keep on coming. But like, um, like you Costco heard, Jones, you know what I mean? I, Costco Jones. I never seen Costco <laughs> Jones. What um you what y'all are saying that she um still had to kill yeah so the uh, my so they were saying so what they were saying was uh they were saying something about the souls and I said that it seemed like it had to be a hundred men so man so that's what I believe it has to be a hundred men so she claims that she killed all those people but Is yet she, she said in, in the show then she, she said one. that she had to do it to a hundred people and she said she did it to a hundred people and I'm wondering why the girl's body didn't leave the fox didn't leave and the girl come back if that was the case i don't see i, I don't know For, from what i remember is she was at 99 
and Tick was supposed to be the last one. Mm -hmm. And if she had, if she did already get that last one before coming to Chicago, she wouldn't be a, a, a Kumiho anymore. And it seems like she still is. So unless I don't think she, she has she that last the, one. Unless she killed the mother. I think she says in the episode mm -hmm. that she killed the hundred. Maybe I mean, Shaman did tell her that she was going to have to see a whole lot more bloodshed before she's through. So maybe oh, we got another new name here. I can't pronounce it. Uh, it, it says uh, th they were rounding up to 100. It could have been. A, maybe it was. I don't know if it was a round. Up. Yeah, we, we, we don't know. I, I only remember them saying the number 100. Yeah, I remember hearing 100, so it could be around the book. She could have did it. All right, we got Letty right here, all upset at Tick. And, and this is something that every guy has gone through with a chick, especially when another chick is involved. That look on Letty's face, this actress, she did this, she, she done did, doing the damn she did this before. She 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 had this. <laughs> she done had an argument. Lady Journey to alone. No, we were talking about Lady, <laughs> not Journey. Stop it. <laughs> she 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 had been in this because that anger in her face. I done seen that so many times in my life. And this one right here, Tick. I have been in this position right here. Right here. Let me tell you. Look her. Look her. Look her. Let me tell you about, about these that, conversations right? too. Let me say, okay, it ain't just you, you men's that have to deal with the nonsense like this. All right, yo, our brother Big Kev is in the chat. What's going on, Bridge? What up to my brother Bridge for and everything? Yeah, Listen, real sidebar, real quick. If you could highlight uh, Siren Thomas, the last comment that he put up there. Where is that? I will look for it real quick. Um, I do agree, Siren, because it, you know her her mom basically fucked her over twice. Okay? What kind of I, I, only comment I see from Siren is what kind of beer are you drinking? <laughs> um, no, no, no. It's closer to the end of the chat, like right around where uh, Bridge came in. It should right. be his name. It says anyone want to talk about the poor girl's mom uh, was letting her husband rape her, and yeah. She knew what was going on. It. I don't mind. I don't see. Oh, I don't see it. Sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I would highlight it, but I really don't see it. All right. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can grab it. Okay. Look for my name and I will copy and paste it. All right. But yeah, this triangle that you put on your hand as a man when 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 chicks is this is this I done been like this is the, the it's like the prayer. It's like Shorty, it's that exasperation. Like, are you done? Can yeah, I please I'm, speak my words right now? Are yeah, you? I'm, done? I'm gonna put myself AK up here real quick so so y'all can see exactly what I'm talking about. When you do this, when you see this like that, when you're like, <laughs> and you take that breath, and you're like, listen, I may not believe in God. But I'm telling you right now, girl, you got to leave me alone. <laughs> you not listening to me. You not paying attention. You ain't doing that. This when you see this right here, girls, ladies, when you see a man do this mm -hmm. right now, that's when it's time to slow down. All right. Once that come up to the floor, you just like this, <laughs> and that uh -huh. up. It's time to slow down, right? <laughs> no, but to to respond on what Siren was saying, yeah, she allowed that man to to do that to Gia all through her childhood for how many of her years she it, it lasted, and then she called herself wanting to get revenge, and she summoned this damn uh, spirit into her daughter, making her again put put the legwork in. She's got to be the one to deal with, with the you know having her body uh, defiled even more now. Mm -hmm. I and agree with you. With all that, that. Blood filled room all the time. If you were really that self righteous and you actually cared like you say you did, one, the shit wouldn't have happened in the first place, and two, you would have summoned that damn spirit into yourself. Yeah, it it it's it's uh. It's a difficult thing because she says that she felt like the the husband cared about her, right? And yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's weird. So did did the husband? That, that's the whole thing. Did the husband actually? Was it obviously it's creepy, but it wasn't a Woody Allen situation, and that's what the mother was so mad about 
well, not that actually that that happened to her, but that this guy cared more about her than the mom. And that's why she wanted revenge on the husband because he cared more about the door than herself. You know what that sounds that's like? That's where I took it. That sounds that sounds like a precious situation. You, did you see that movie when it came out? Yes, I seen it. Yeah, my Monique played the mom, and she was pissed because her daughter had had uh, t- two kids by the daddy who was her husband, and she she only had one. Like what? Yeah. What the? Like, well, what the hell is wrong with you? How how does that logic in your brain? Like, uh, she she was so into wanting to, you know, save face and be a part of the community and not be shunned and whatnot. And you put all of that on your daughter mm-hmm. instead of being the adult and handling it yourself. Exactly. Now, people say, listen, she specifically said in the show. That when she searched this guy's memories, mm-hmm. that she felt that the guy loved her. Yeah. And Period. that he was the one that that taught her that song every time. You know, mom was like, Why I, I taught you that song to comfort you or some other right? And she was like, uh no, no, bitch. I have his memories, not mm-hmm. yours. Exactly. So maybe y'all saying, oh, what are y'all talking? Maybe y'all need to go rewatch it. <laughs> My lady, Elamar. Wish you were here rocking with us too. It'd be right, so Elamar, great if you were. Come on, man. I wish you could be. It's usually it's hard for her to do things during the week. These yeah, times yeah. Like that's that. why. But wish she's, I was lucky not to have been hit, spanked as a kid. LOL. I remember one spanking as a kid. I always held it in as my memory and never forgave. For it was to for it caused to this day. I still think it as unwarranted, and, and you know I think that comes with the generations. You know what I mean? As I said, mm-hmm. as, as I said, when when I, when I think that I think that my grandfather got hit. I think that he hit my father, and I think my father passed it on to me, and I stopped it. And I think my generation is the generation that stopped the beating of the kids. Mm-hmm. I think that's when it stopped in my generation. I think that's when it really got put on hold. And like, yo, this was wrong that it happened to us, man. But I think all before time, it kept getting passed on and everything else. Yeah, it's a, it's a vicious, it's a vicious circle. It's it sure really, that that. Gener- generational uh, trauma. And you know, like if you watched uh, Watchmen with Regina King uh, last year, the season they had on HBO, they touched on that generational trauma, and it, it's a thing. There's no doubt about it. I'm you, Eddie Murphy said it in Delirious, and, and that's exactly the way the things he uh-huh. said in Delirious is. This, I said the exact same thing when he was said after he got beaten. He was like, oh, "God, please kill them, <laughs> kill them." <laughs> I, I said uh-huh. that. I said that after I got beat, I said those exact same words. Like, God, <laughs> God, please kill him. Oh, God. God, I, I, I really felt that way. And the fact that he said that, and, he, and the thing is, when you make a joke, all right, about something, that means it has to happen at, to so many people that they understand. Mm-hmm. And get they understand, involved. exactly. And that's why they laugh with you. Yep. Exactly. That, and that's the way it was. Mm-hmm. Everyone got it because they all said it because they all got beat and they all said, God, mm-hmm. please kill him. <laughs> that's just what it was. Now, random, random off topic. Seriously, we should do a watch party for freaking Delirious. Oh, we should. We that should. remains one of like my top three stand up. Uh, if I can, I would do time. it and I don't care about monetizing it. I would do non monetize. But if I could do it without getting kicked off of YouTube, oh, no, I, I, no, we wouldn't do it on YouTube. No, there's there's ways to do it, and we can just like give people the uh, the address. And if we did stream anything on YouTube, it would just stream our reactions, not the actual movie. All right. Well, yeah, you you could you could let me know. We yeah, could yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll check into it and then uh, touch base with you. All right. Next okay. we got. Exactly. Like, 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 this, this is the look that women give you after you give them the triangle. Like this, this, this is the look that women give you when they say, you know, like, like, oh, you're going to leave? Uh, you can't leave. I'm going to follow you to your job. That's the look. Like, like, they, like who, who, that's the look you get. That is the look you get for women when after you do the triangle and they still ain't having it. And then you have to give them this look back. Like, sure, are you serious? Mind you, are you Mind serious you. right now? Are you she, really serious? She, she, packed, she packed his bag, y'all. 
she packed his bag. And then when he grabbed it and put a couple more things in and started walking away, where you going? Then you get this. That's when you get this right here. <laughs> That's when you get this. Oh, oh, you going to pack Did my you bag? just tell my brother to leave? You just told me to leave. But then as soon as you leave, oh, where you going? Where, where you, <laughs> you just told me to go. Where, where you care where I'm going? You just pack my bag. Oh, right. Come on, let's you've been my hero all season. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this, please. All women do it. Every woman do it. They want you to leave, but they don't want you to go. That, that's basically the best way to say it. They tell you to leave, but they don't tell you to go. Now, I'm just saying. And yes, Val, I know she didn't mean it. She was just mad. But come on, man. Yeah, don't I'm say it. I have been no. in Tick's shoes is what I'm saying. That, this is what Tone's saying. He has been in Tick's shoes. I've been there. That, that, that shit is annoying to have to deal with. He wasn't going to leave or go anywhere at first. He wanted to just sit and talk it out. She's the one that threw the bag at him. Mm -hmm. Just saying. You can't be mad at my dude, man. I've been through that too many times. <laughs> in my life. Too many times. But see, me, I'm and that dude. She's that pregnant, and I know hormones are going off. Right. But shit, come on, man. She ain't I'm got out. Yet. I'm out. The when this happened to me, I'm gone. You're going to have to think about that. You know, I, I'm, I, you know, even if I don't want to go, even if I just sit around the corner and just sit there or go in my car and drive around the block and just sit there, I got to go just to prove the point that uh, that's it. You know, like, I'm, you want me going? This this is what's going to be <laughs> like. Going. Everybody in chat talking about hormones. She's pregnant. Oh, no, that good. doesn't make it okay. That don't make no difference. It's Susan I Little acknowledge is that. I Susan acknowledge Little is the best. That she is the devil's advocate okay. of the chat. Come on, if those roles were reversed, would y'all really still be thinking the same thing? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, hormones. She was no hormones. I'm just, I'm just saying, she ain't that far along to where the hormones are affecting her that easily. Exactly. He, Come on now. Look at when you see this face right here on him. This is look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> look at his face. He's like, "Are you serious?" That's the that's lady. Can we just talk, man? Or, or do we have to do this? Do we really have to uh, do this? That, that's the. Are you serious? Are we, really, Shorty? Really? All right. I'm done with this. I'm done. I gotta go. I'm done. Oh, I, I, I try, and this is what you get right here. This is this is the this is the re. I'm trying to reason with you. I'm trying to reason with you, Shorty. Should listen to me. Focus on my brain. My brain. I'm trying to get what's in my brain to come across yo, to you. Yo, and this like, is the. I don't give a like fuck with your brain. Right there, please. <laughs> Val 287. Oh, and, and then you get the final, like, are you goddamn serious, Shorty? Val 287, right here. <laughs> I hate you. Oh, you <laughs> better not walk out that door. You you better. Not walk out that door. <laughs> and your parents are yelling you, and you keep trying to explain, and they keep saying, shut up. And then they end their whole rant, and you're just sitting there looking at them, and then they start yelling at you again, answer me. You just told me to shut up like five times. Exactly. I'm four. I don't know what the hell to tell you. Well, well, I, I lied. Please ask this question in a little bit when we come back to the child. We're gonna to get to that part. I want you to come back to that. Uh, please bring 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 this question back up and everything else because we definitely. But yes, yeah, I, I need information on that question for sure. Yeah, you know, but that that's what it is. That's what it is. Like you. Get out, but you better not leave. <laughs> Tamara, yes, actually. I think um, a, a few folks may have uh, skipped over that line. Remember, you know, in that whole mishmash of a conversation, Letty did say, you know, everyone has died since you came back but you. Exactly. And that's a fact. That's a fact. And, that's, a fact. and that's, that's definitely symbolic that went to fact. She mm -hmm. said that to him. Everyone has died but you. You know, yeah. and that means something that he it she's foreshadowing his death, and this uh, that 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 he's going to die. Yeah. And I'm gonna do a video. Is Tick gonna die? But Tick gonna die. I don't know. <laughs> <if it's> gonna... <laughs> I'm sorry, Joanna. Just put in the chat. I meant leave the room, not the house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, because, Joe, you win, you, Joanna, I'm sorry. You win the chat for the night, man. Yeah, because listen, <laughs> the, bottom, the bottom line is this. This is the way women go. Women like, listen, 
I don't want your shit right now, but I don't want nobody else to have it because I'm right. gonna want five minutes from now. I'm be looking for your ass, and you better not be at that bitch's house. Exactly. You know <laughs> what I mean? Exactly. Like you know what I mean? It's like, yo, you best not go put that in nobody else. But I don't mm-hmm. want it for two minutes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and that's the way women are, and that, that's the problem. That, that's the whole thing, and that that's that's why women don't rule the world because they too emotional. They just no, I I legit had an ex like that, man, for real. And, you know, anytime shit got too real, she you know that some argument would randomly be started, and you know, we'd have to backstep like 20 freaking paces. And you know, after a while, you you'd be done with that shit. So it mm-hmm. happened again, and I was just like, all right, fucking I'm out. Next no. thing I know, one week later, well, what you did, oh, you know, bitch, what the fuck you mean what I did? <laughs> Bloody chasing after. <laughs> what is this? DP three O. DP three O. You are another new name. Welcome. New name. DP. Welcome. Hopefully you subscribe to DP three O. We appreciate yes, you being yes, there. Let's get these likes going. We got. Looks like we got one fourteen watching. Yeah, seventy-five get, likes. Yeah. Shout out to the hater that came through to give us that one dislike. Of course, they always hate. Always, you, always, I've you. been I've been hating on since I've been doing Game of Thrones stuff. There's always people hating on me, hating on any type of success that I get. They don't they want me to fail, but they I just can't. So that's just what it is, and that's just the bottom line. And you know, you strong in here, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit them for thumbs sure, up, man. Sure. Let's keep this going, so them haters know that we rock it. So this and is also also let's remember. Tick knows that Letty's pregnant, but Letty still ain't said nothing to Tick. Exactly. And by that same token, Tick still has not has not said anything to Letty. Like I, I you know, I, I know we need to talk. But I yeah, know, she's uh, sitting here know. talking about what he yeah. didn't say to her, but she something important is that she don't want to say to him. You know <laughs> what I mean? So it, it, it's, that's all that, I'm saying, right? You know, we got we got to put the shit out there. You know, we you know we don't never tell nothing but the truth. That's a women. That's women for you. So D right here. This is the the, the 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 strength of D. She's going through searching for Lancaster. You know what I mean? She's like, and she puts on the 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 the, the hat from the Negro League right here. This is the Negro League mm-hmm. hat from the Negro League back here. And you know we've seen Jackie Robinson, and we see it come back into play when she's fighting these girls later because we see Jackie Robinson beat up in the beginning. You know, when, when, and, and Tick's dream is Jackie Robinson that hits the home run and, and smashes the monster. And we kind of see that with D here. But here on the subway train, this is when the creepiness starts. Here we go. We see these two. And l- let me tell you something about these actors. <laughs> they did a hell of a job. Hell of a job. I, I got to say that they did a hell of a job portraying. These these monsters that they portrayed them. I had what, what is their name? I know their names too. Uh no, no, no I'm, I'm over here. I can't remember their names of the. Of the I team. look at them up the other day. I forget what their names are. But though while while they are filmed and framed to be uh, look as children, they're actually two adults and they're both professional dancers. Yeah, I, I mean, I know, I know the names of the what of the characters they're playing. It was oh, like, uh, to- Topsy and Bopsy. Yeah, Topsy and Bopsy that yeah. they're playing. Yeah, over here and they, and, and listen, they 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 they, 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 they did it. They, they they did the job that they were given to do, and they did it well. Because after this episode, boy, look. You know, um, you and you and Elmar went live after the episode, and um, me and my cousin were watching y'all for a bit, and she uh, went ahead and went to bed. So by the time you guys were done, it was about like eleven thirty. I'm like, okay, let me go see if maybe my mom's still up. And I walked in the kitchen; the whole back of the house was dark. So I turned right around and said, "Nope," because I'm not gonna go stumble and try to find anybody's light switch right now. And then about 1.30, one of my aunts got up. I was like, yeah, so can I use, like, the other half of your bed real quick? Because I'm not feeling being in the room by myself after watching this damn episode. And, yeah, still didn't get no sleep. No, they did a job. And I'll tell you what, hit the, hit the like, you know, because, listen, there's some creepers who, don't, you know, don't come in the chat. And we know they're never going to hit the like. But if you can, you know what I mean? Listen, it, it, it really helps out. And it's free. It don't cost you nothing. Right, to hit the like you nothing. All you gotta do is it take one second, not even a second. Boop, you click it and it's done deal. That's not a lot to ask for. 
I don't ask for anything in here, you know, and that's all I'm asking for is just to hit the like button. That's really not a lot. That's and, and when you look at the big scheme of things in life, that's not a lot, you know, at all. Oh, the, it goes right through there. So, you know, they chase her on a train, and then the next scene we see with her, she tries to tell Christina exactly what happened. Letty, Letty. Letty, I'm sorry. She tried to tell Letty what happened, but she can't because the spell that was placed on her won't allow her to talk. Yeah. Kind of like exactly the spell that was placed on them when they forgot everything that happened to them inside the mansion. Mm. So, like, t two things with this whole scene. One when she did start trying to tell Letty, you know, she was able to get out the words, you know, behind you. But then when she was about to explain what Letty was not seeing, she, you know, her, her throat started closing up and she said, I can't breathe. So that was a 2020 uh, moment, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. And then she run, she, she finds Woody and you know, the, 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 the creepy twins almost get her, but she runs away. My question is maybe if Letty would have been paying attention and, and was able to take care of the baby who needs to be taken care of at the moment, if Letty would have got into the house, maybe they wouldn't have got her. Because yeah. remember, Letty's house is warded now. Yeah, they couldn't have probably got in there. So she, that probably was might have been the safest place for her. But again, the adults were all, all wrapped up in their feelings and they forgot to take care of the baby. Exactly. And we see that in, in, in real life all the time. Mm -hmm. Constantly where, where they should be taking care of the kids and they and they more concerned about their situation and, and what's going on with their life and not taking care of the kids and stuff like that. But, you know, yeah. she, she does that. And then we go to she finds the car. You know, which uh, how, how freaking heartbreaking is that for her to walk walk up in that? She didn't expect to see that car. That's not where she was going. And she was just trying to get away from the things chasing her. And then she sees her mom's car, and all she's been told is her mom is on the guide trip. Yeah, and now she finds been a the week, car. and she's now, still back. Yep, and now the car is here, so she realizes mm -hmm. truly that that was truly a lie. And you know, and the the car represents a father, and it represents yeah. a mother. It's a family. It's a family. That's her family car, right? You know that that's what those cars back in the day they were. You know, you know, when you look at station wagons and things like that, those those are cars that family cars, and that's what that's what it meant. And Virgo says something about stop that knocking at the door. Yeah, so that was a yeah. the men, that was a menstrual show songs, and these were people who pretended to be black and sung these songs, and that's when you would hear their lyrics. They would do their vo voices like like they thought how a black person would, would sound. Or they'd be talking like this and say, hey, a black, how you doing there? Brother, stop that knocking at the door because I'm black and this is how black people sound. They would do that and then sing like that also. Mm -hmm. So that's what that that that's how they did that. Yeah. Um, like like some of the folks are saying in the chat. Um, I forget her last name, but I do believe her first name is Jada, or maybe it's Jada. I'm not sure how she pronounces it, but that's the the um little girl that plays uh D, and she she is doing the damn thing. Like, I feel like, you know, Stranger Things needs to hit her up for the next season because they have an uncanny gift of casting extremely great child actors mm -hmm. for that show. I, th I think I think uh, Lil D needs to join that cast. Would I shout that? Now, this is the best symbolism that we get throughout the whole this whole episode, I think, happens right here. So you, you could look and you could see Tick and this is when Tick and Montrose talk and you mm -hmm. could see right here Tick and Montrose. And you look right here, right behind them, right in front of them, you see the prescriptions, right? And what prescriptions do when you get a prescription, it's supposed to represent healing, right? Mm -hmm. That heals you when you get a prescription. And then and when you, you look at that, catch that. Good, huh? catch. good catch on that. I didn't, I didn't piece that together. Oh, and then when you look behind them, right here behind them is Earl's Garage, Moda Tune-Up. What's that do? Fix. Mm -hmm. You bring your car here to fix, and you can see that they're behind them. They have to fix a problem that could be behind them, but in front of them, if they heal each other, they can be they can be down with each other. So I yeah. think that that's how that represents. They have a problem that's behind them right now, and they can get it behind them, and they can actually turn into 
fixing that problem, get the prescription to fix that. And that's how they, uh, and that's and, how they can move forward. And I think that's what happens in this episode, in, in this actual scene mm-hmm. when they're talking to each other. And see, and that's the, the thing with Montrose. And, and honestly, with a lot of different families, sometimes they don't know how to properly communicate with each other when there's a crisis or some you know trauma that's happened. If Montrose would have simply just talked to Tick when he first came through, their relationship could have been a lot better. I mean, they hadn't spoken in five years at the beginning of this, but Montrose was still always asking George how Tick was doing, you know, over in Korea. Mm-hmm. And when, when they first saw each other at the freaking village, he said, you know, I ain't, I ain't spoke to you in five years and you fight me on everything. You didn't need to yell at the man. But he, after all that and all the abuse, he still tried to come rescue your dusty ass because he's your son and you're his dad and he loves you. But you mm-hmm. keep barking at this man, you know, and <clears throat> that part with Sammy in the last episode when they uh, when they were in the hallway, well, not the last episode. Or was it? Yeah. But anyway, it was, if if Montrose would have kept his cool, they easily could have had this conversation then. But Montrose is Montrose, and you know he takes his shirt off, and you know I'm still your daddy, bro, bro. This man just whooped your ass twenty ways to Sunday just a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. He's not that little boy anymore. Come correct. Talk to this man as an adult, man to man. Sit and actually talk. Yep, it's hard but sometimes. I don't know how to do that. Finally, though, we get this scene, and and, and it, it was it was a bit heartwarming, you know. It was cool, but eh, Mancho still has a long to go. Heidi, my lady, what's going on? Always love to see you. Thank what you, for Heidi. I, I I will say that I will be on this month in a couple of weeks. Heidi will be on Teflon TV. Her yes, yes, LMR. I heard about that. We're doing the breakdown of the of interview with the vampire. So. Stay tuned for that. Our Halloween special will be on that, and that's what it is. But yeah, if people saying they didn't catch that and it was good catch, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is Teflon TV. This is what I do. But you know, you know, yeah, that's exactly what I think that this symbolizes. This scene here is them healing each other and tuning up, uh, fixing their relationship, tuning it up, and then healing each other and being able to move forward with that. Uh, and I think that's why that is right there in front of them. But I, and you see here, obviously, we got the, we got, the, you got the book. We that's the from book. the future behind and I, and I him. Got a question. I got a question. Yep. So, you know, in chat room, you 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 let me know what you think also. Do y'all think it's a possibility that the George Freeman that wrote that book isn't the child that Letty is carrying right now? You know, sure. some folks are speculating that maybe Gia has a kid back in Korea that she didn't bring and she hasn't told Tick about yet. The, I don't the know kid if that's looked really black. Storyline. The the kid definitely looked really black uh, in, in in on the cover on the back of the book. Yeah, he it, doesn't it look. He doesn't like look mixed. Um, he has no Tiger he's Woods he's in him. I don't see the Tiger Wood in him. You know. I mean, true, true enough, but that's the thing. You never really know how genetics is, are going to fall. That's true. And, and and you don't know if this is his first child or his you know if this child he has he could have another child it could be a, a second child you don't know if it's his exact child hmm. you don't know so uh, we got Val says could be uh it could be the son could be yeah. the son Val believes I mean, that it could would, be would Gia name because Tim at this point possible? the kid would have to be born already if she does if she does have it so would Gia even know to name Six child George. That would be that situation too, which he did well. Unless he talked about George, like George is the one who actually got him the the movie. I mean, well, yeah, he did. He did mention George once, and he said, you know, that, that that's who set up his first date. You know, so it, it's possible, but I feel like that that's almost a, a Dan and Dave move with with them making uh, John's name Aegon, and I, I don't, I, I just I don't see how that will fit. Well, it could be, you know, it could if be. If something happened to, th- to Tick, I think Letty would absolutely know that he would have wanted to name his son George. Yeah, there's Gina, no doubt about it. I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know that she she would do that. 
Yeah, I, I, I could I could definitely see that let Letty name the kid George or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if GI would do that. It, yeah, it, it goes so. both ways. But as as we say, you had the, the brand new book written by George, supposedly, behind him, and he brings it to the forefront when they heal each other. Mm-hmm. When he showed when he shows it to him, and you can see it right here on the book. We got a good shot of the book cover right here. Journey into worlds within worlds. Worlds within worlds. Within worlds. Isn't right? that so, where Hippolyta is right now? Yep. So it's one world, two worlds, three different worlds we got here. Full, multi- full multiverse. All right. So it's worlds <laughs> within worlds within. So it's journey into worlds within worlds within worlds. So three. So there's four worlds all together. That's the world they were in and the three that they go into. You know, and then you got the guy w- right here on the cover. With like a light holding a flashlight, to, holding keep the flashlight yeah. to keep the shoggoths away and i could be mistaken but that symbol under george's name right there looks similar to uh the protection spell symbol mm, you know what you're right I could be wrong. You know too. I could be wrong. it does look similar there's no doubt about it tamara says she thinks it's d who wrote the book that's protecting herself that's possible. Authors have uh, different pen names all the time. Like, um, what's his name? Jo- Jonah Hill, who wrote uh, Lock and Key. That's Stephen King's son. And I do believe he's actually Stephen King Jr., but he writes under Jonah Hill, so he knows that his fans are giving him love on his own merit, not his dad's. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. A- and D is an author, so I-, I could see that happening. I could see that happening. I did like that the you know the plot that uh, Tick described was the actual book in our world. Yes, I, I did. I did appreciate that nod. Yeah, he said it also may not be his son, one generation, like in his son's son. Yeah, it could be his yeah, son's son. Be. It, it could, could be his grand grandson yeah, or his the timeline, great great grandson. The you know, it, it could it could be it. We don't know how far because all we know is that he said that the woman had a mechanical arm, so it has to be far. You know, mm-hmm. w- w- you know. It, That's it's why hard. I think he came to twenty twenty. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to say because what what was what does that mean? Mechanical arm? Does that mean you no? Know, back then, what would be technology back then? If they seen technology in twenty twenty, it would be. Like like space age to them. So mm-hmm. is it truly space age? Like we see in the lady with the afro, like that, like with with, with like that. When we see in um, uh, Hippolyta with the with the with the things in her arm, like that space age that far ahead in time, or would it just be a mechanical arm that actually just moves because it has some type of you know not it's not a hook like it would be back then, and he's just saying, oh, it's, it's, it's freaky technology that he never thought of and everything else. Yeah, and I and I think that that's what it is. That's why I think, you know, white folks writing, it's, it's a lot of uh, white white folks and allies that are, you know, protesting. And, you know, not everyone's writing. You know, don't, don't get it twisted. There's a lot of folks that are protesting because of the injustices uh, on, you know, black, black uh, citizens, you know? So... Mm-hmm. I think it's very plausible that he saw that. And if he sees a woman with a mechanical arm, you know, this is the fifties that we're in right now. So let's say, you know, cause we see these arm is all messed up in the trailer. Let's say that arm gets chuffed, um, chopped off. And then once the technology becomes available, she gets that robotic arm oh, and really? she knows tick is going to be there. So, you know, I don't know how, but you know, again, magic. And she makes sure to get there to give him that book to maybe try to change something? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Could be, oh, Camille TV says the mechanical arm lady was Hippolyta. It, it, it could be. I It could be Hippolyta. Could, I just think that if it was, he would maybe recognize her. I just think that if it, was D, on. if it was D grew up, he would. She had a hood on. She it had was, a hood on, so I don't was, think he saw her face. Yeah, if it was D grew up, I don't think he would recognize her, even if it was her. I don't think he would know it was her. It's if D gets her arm chopped off next episode, it's D. That I think that's the yeah. best way to know you know it's her. Yeah. If her that. arm doesn't get chopped off, then we can go with the Hippolyta situation or someone yeah. else. But if D's arm gets chopped off, it's D. this definitely D. I mean, and yeah. maybe that's why right now Hippolyta isn't back yet. 
So maybe, you know, bef- you know, she, at, the last thing we heard her say was D needs me. Mm-hmm. But what if maybe she had one more misadventure after that? And she saw some shit that was like, oh, okay, my baby girl need me, but I cannot go back just yet. And she knows she, well, she she thinks that she left her kid in very responsible hands. And technically she did. Ruby, Ruby is in, in, in a responsible individual, but she didn't know any of this was going to happen to Emmett. And she didn't plan for the shit going so haywire. No, the Alamar, you know, I wish you were here. And that's yeah, you know, I don't even that's that's without words me saying that you know that without yeah, I don't think that. anyone would care about you being covered in paint. I mean, and you could always just leave the camera off. Just saying. Yeah, I know. I I I, I would <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna say nothing. I'm I mean, gonna, I, I always appreciate seeing Elmar's face, but you know, uh, I'm just gonna move, <laughs> I'm gonna move on. We got brother purple, purple lover seventy seven. I'm almost, almost certain it's D. Yeah, I, I, I would say about 90%. Either. Yes. Listen, I've seen a lot of name, new names in here. And just in case you know, I've never seen you before. Please, if you can, just subscribe to the channel so you can be notified every time we go live with this Lovecraft yes, stuff. Make sure you hit the bell, y'all, so you get the notifications. Cause exactly. Because even, even though we only have two episodes left, even when the season's over, we go oh, come we back here. About. And we're going to talk about We're going to do a whole review on everything. We're going to break it all down. Then we're going to give predictions for upcoming season, mm-hmm. what we think is going to happen. So yes, definitely do that. You know, we all about them three. So we here, we see, we see, uh, we see, I'm forgetting her name. Kyle, Heidi in here. We see Letty in here in the church and praying. And, and, and the funny thing is that she called Christina. Did come. she call her? Yeah, she called. That's how Christina how happened. Does everybody have Christina's number. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How <laughs> did she contact Christina? How, how did that work out? That's what I want to say. But she contacted Christina to come there with her. To come there with her. Now, since Heidi's here, I'm gonna try to I'm I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do my uh analysis of the uh of the uh of the costumes here yeah, in honor of Heidi. So Christina's got some some uh some old school, some new old school to me, you know, banger earrings on going on here mm-hmm, right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can see it poking through her head. She she is all those, about those knockers. That's what she a got, bad bitch does. She she got those knockers hanging up in there. <laughs> I don't know if, if women back in the day maybe wore earrings that big. Back of that, you know what I mean? But she got them knockers, them door knockers hanging up in there, the, the, them around the way girl earrings in her ears hanging she up knew. in there and stuff. You know, that, that that's what I'm looking at here. And Letty looking like Letty, you know, and let let Letty Letty always has the same, you know, she has that same look, but you know, it's like she called her to get here, but like she's like uh you know, she doesn't want to like like I called you here, but I don't want you here. Look on her face. Yeah, I, like, I, I you you can't blame her. Honestly, that that's an that's a very appropriate look to be having. Like you know, she again, she's pulling a tick right now. You know, she she's going past everybody else instead of communicating properly like they should be. She's making her own uh, deal. With the, with the devil, pretty much, because she came there with the negatives for the pages, so she knew what was up. Give a shout out, so everyone. Give a shout out to Purple Lover seventy seven, new up in the chat, chilling yeah, with us sure. right now, and everything else. So thank you for being here, Purple Lover seventy seven. Hope you subscribe and you chill and everything else like that. We want you to be up in here. This is a community. It's a family, and that's really hopefully you stick around. How do I reply back or tag you? Uh, I'm a uh, bad at YouTube, so. How you tag somebody or reply back as you put the at in front of their names, right? Is that what it is, AK? Yeah, you put the at in front of their names. And usually by the time you've typed like the fourth letter in their name, a little pop-up will come up with their icon and full name. You just click enter on that. And uh, it won't highlight on your screen, um, but it'll highlight on the person you're tagging screen. So they'll see it. That is what it is. So that's how you do that. And hopefully, you know, you you, you do that and so tag me a couple of times because I like that. Uh, this old nobody talking to nobody trope. 
Wow. Yeah, I I have a a big issue, you know, when it comes to communication. I think that you know, in in any relationship, whether it be romantic, platonic, family, friends, there has to be proper communication between everyone. And for what's been going down for this whole season, I don't understand how these folks have not figured that out yet. Every time mm-hmm. y'all keep something from from the other, some more shit happens. And then you find out you you end up like Letty and Ruby arguing because Ruby really only has one side of the story. Letty didn't even try to interject what her tick and Uncle George went through. Exactly. And I think that's why Ruby is still you know allowing herself to be in the position that she's in. Like in the trailer, I had to laugh because they show that scene where you know Letty and Ruby are talking, but then. They show Christina driving off with Ruby in the car. And maybe it's just me, but yeah, Christina has that little look on her face like, yeah, bitch, I got your sister. What you going to do? Mm-hmm. So like I said, you know, Ruby and Christina are definitely using each other, but it, it doesn't mean that there aren't feelings there. Something's going to happen. And that brings us... It, and the, all right, so before we get into it, so I'm going to do my costume, cold breast break them. These look like some uh, knit pants, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, Semi high waisted knit pants. Uh, I would, I would have to assume that there's a zipper in the back. Is that is that how they, these pants would be shaped, with a zipper in the back of the pants? Because there doesn't seem to be anything in the front, and you would yes. think that Either somehow that, they have to keep them tightened up. So I would think there would be a zipper going right down the crack of my ass, zipper or it's um just form fitting. If it if it's if it's made to be you know form fitting for someone in, in a letty shape, then it wouldn't need um, a zipper because if you look at the waistband there, it looks like there might be some elastic in there. Oh, I see. So she might not necessarily. It, 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 you would think that for it to cinch that tight, you would have to have some type of zipper going down the back. I mean, I I've no women, I've no pants like that. And okay, I, oh, I, they, I, they used those are, those are early ninety, late eighty pants, and I yeah, love those. I pants. Saying it's a it's a uh, side zipper. Oh, I love those pants. So yeah, that might be that might be it too. Like I have a pair of uh, form fitting pants like that, but instead of zippers, I have two ties. That are on the sides that lace up, so I that makes it. sense. Oh, I used to love seeing girls in those pants when I went to school. Oh my god! Oh, with the zipper right in the back. Oh, right. I used to love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved it so much. Oh, I loved it so much. I loved it so much. And then we get, you know, right here we get the 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 mark of Cain. Yeah. See, and I'm wondering why it's the mark of Cain. I mean, if you're up on your biblical knowledge, then, you know, Cain was supposedly the bad brother. And, you know, he he's the one that committed like the first, well, one, one of the first, you know, great sins. He, he kinslayed. He, he killed his brother because his brother was more favored in God's eyes than him. So how is it that his mark is what gives protection? Exactly. And how is his mark the one that heals? Yes. I I I I I need to know what uh, books and spells Chrysilium is is tapping into. To, and, yeah, you know, she, that, and, and she was the first one to figure out. out that this healed. So this was yeah. a spell that most likely was already that she used on Letty to heal Letty. That 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 was used to, to bring Letty back to life. And now she has it marked on her to the point where it, she's invulnerable. See, and, and that also that it kind of reminds me of um Charmed. I know you didn't watch the show, but for folks in the chat room, if you remember when Piper was pregnant with Wyatt, Piper was invulnerable to harm the whole time because Wyatt um had the, the strength of his magic, he was always able to protect her in the womb. Mm, every so, time I hear I don't I hear know Piper, if, I think of Orange is the new black. But why do you think of Orange is the New Black? Because Piper is the lead character in there. Oh, that's her name. Not not the same person, though. <laughs> <laughs> not the same. Not the same actress. <laughs> oh, Piper was a uh, Holly Marie Combs. And that's who it is. All right. So, yeah, so I just I question how that's going to work out, and and that's and, you know, like this mark right here on Letty. Honestly, is why I think that the George Freeman that wrote that book is her son, because. 
with him growing inside her, I would have to think that he's also protected while that mark is on her. I would think so. All right. So let's get this thing. So did it kill the child though? I don't think it killed the child. And we got someone who said that I think AK's theory that the child could be protected also because it's a part of her and, you know, and Bill Gork protection i don't think it's a luke cage thing where it just made her skin invulnerable i think it's her whole body so mm -hmm. i think it's a good chance that 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 the child is 100 percent the ak hold it down i'll be no, right sure. back i mean also you know the thought i have on that y'all is the th that that child that lady's carrying you know it's tick's kid so it has the blood of titus braithwaite and he was also, you know, very big on invulnerability and protection spells and whatnot. So now I don't, I don't think the baby is dead at all. Um, I do think that it's going to end up being that, and, and we saw the bullets bouncing off of Letty. So that, that we already know it works for her. I think it's going to continue working all the way up until, uh, you know, uh, the baby is born. However, we don't know if it's going to be a boy or a girl. So I'm not completely tossing out the kid that could possibly have been had with Gia and Tick. I don't know. It could it could go both ways. We, we don't know if Lady's going to have a son or not. We're just speculating because of the book we saw. So let's see. Taff says the child is protected because it has six blood. I think so too. I think it has its own um, invulnerability, but having the mark of Cain adds to that. And that's also what's going to help um, protect Letty throughout the rest of the season, at least. So I don't know. It, how, how, how do we know? How do we know it's a boy, Purple Lover? School me, cause I, I I'm here for all of the tinfoil, y'all. I love I love talking theories. Why why do you think we already know it's a boy? Exactly. There's no there's no like proof. Stomach, she's not even showing it. Mm hmm. There's no proof that this is that this is the yeah, actual. No, no, that's gonna be a boy. See, cause I we found out from Tick that his son is in the future. I get that, but what I was saying is we don't know whether Gia might have a child or not. So I need to I need to see that play out first. Mm -hmm. And if there isn't a second child, then yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think it could be Letty's. We have this is the most I've ever had in a Lovecraft stream. 140 people rocking with us right now. Sure. 141. I'm gonna drink to that. See, yo, smash that like, folks. Hit that like button. See, that's what happens. The more you hit the like button, the more that people can come and it, YouTube makes it visible. You know what I mean? So definitely hit that like button and, and 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 do that. So we move on from 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 talking about that to you know we see we see Diana doing her thing. Listen, she mm -hmm. hunting down Lancaster. She up. Oh, she is on a mission. She she like oh son, you want to curse me? I, I'm know, coming she, for you now. Now she, now I'm coming for you. Wonder Woman. She is being Wonder Woman right here. And you know, if you've seen the Wonder Woman movies, you know Di Diana don't take no shit. I mean, if you've read the comics, especially, she ain't on that fuck shit. Oh, you want to come at me? Word. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can do this. You can catch all of these hands. Exactly. Yeah, she says a forty forty thing. What? Oh, that's a new new yeah, name. New, new person. New name. Hey, forty things with Aaliyah. Okay. Or Aaliyah. See. Hopefully, you subscribe too. Can Jiha? I think that's what you mean. G I R, but G I right? have a child though. I don't know if the fox can have a child. I'm not sure. It it, it depends. It's hard. It's hard to say. It's, 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 is is the fox what what Ruby is, right? Is it is that would like just the fox is just wearing the skin of this woman, like Ruby wears the skin oh. of the white woman, or is it? In you know a part of the no, of it, I, I well it said that it's a spirit that was summoned into Gia, so I don't think there's just a a, a regular skin potion changing right. you know, that that that's higher magic than just drinking a potion to change your uh, skin color or change your sex. So she's in her soul, so that you know she's a part of her. So I yeah. would think then that means she could have a child. Then. Yeah, I mean it, it it doesn't say that you know her 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 body wouldn't function. The way it was supposed to when it comes to reproduction. 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say that that's what it is. I, mean, I, I think I have to agree with that. Like, yeah, I think she can't have a child. Mm -hmm. If she was the actual fox that we've seen and it was a skin change situation, then I'd say no. But it's a soul. It's just yeah, a it's spirit. A it's, it's just a spirit of this thing that's yeah. being summoned. It's inside of the actual person. Then the person is still the person. They just have this. They just don't have their soul anymore. The soul is taken over by this fox. But the, all the body parts are the same. No, you all right? Oh, all right. I, I thought you. Yeah, 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 for sure. We good. All right. Well, uh, uh, T. Nixon says 99 climaxes and no pregnancy. I question that myself. Well, this, well, this because you climb. Who, who, the guy's client? Is that's when she has it, right? When the guy's climb. Yeah, because, yeah, that, that's when the nine tails take like their last bit of life force is uh, right when they orgasm. Yeah, yeah, you know that is a little something. But, something. I mean, maybe, maybe one of them. Listen, them tails came out of every hole in her body. Maybe that that hole has a tail that doesn't allow her to get pregnant. <laughs> all I'm gonna say is I counted all of the uh, you know uh, ho holes that things could have came out of, and I only came up with eight, unless I include a specific part. You so. Know. It's very, it's very easy to see that maybe whatever juices may have flowed would have been easily pushed out. Oh, that's terrible. I'm I, I mean, it's, I know it's horrible to think about, but we on the subject. Damn it, we got to speak it. It could, yeah, we are, we, are, we adults in this motherfucker. <laughs> we, we, they don't children up in here, right? Right? I mean, she, has, she has nine. Okay, you know, count them out two ears, two eyes, two nostrils. That's six. You know, seven for the mouth, eight for the buttocks. It, it, it's only one other place for, for the ninth one to come out. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying it is what it is. <laughs> it is, it it's is horrible it is. to think about, but it is what it is. It definitely is. Okay, and you know, when when this scene happened here, it seemed like to me like 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 she was ignoring them. Like like she didn't care. Oh, yeah. About them. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, I don't even care that y'all behind me. I don't care about y'all getting me. I, I'm doing what I'm doing. And it made me think of, like, if I, you know, like, um, like East by not East by you, uh, the movie with uh, with Goldie Horn's daughter, Skeleton Wait, Key. Uh, oh, like, like, was if that you, huh? I didn't know that was Goldie Horn's daughter. Yeah, Kate Hudson is Goldie okay, Horn's daughter. Okay. You know, and uh, and then, you know, when she was like, when you, when you don't believe in it, it that don't affect you. you, which I don't think is true. But you know, I wasn't in the writers' room for that one. Yeah, that that's the way they, they did the movie. It started making me I think of that, that like like she stopped like she stopped caring about them. And the way that this chick in the back, this her head position, Dude, the way they move. Oh my word! Is this it, it, that it's head so, that's position? Some of the most creepy. How do you get your head? You know. She's got a head off. Let me see. No, you know what that is? You know what that is? Okay, that, that is a testament to, to, to those two young ladies' craft. Because if I put my head... No like, dancers. And if you put my head goes. Look at what... Her head looks... Okay, but you ain't used to moving like that. I know, but I'm saying this is as far as my head goes on my shoulder. You can see yeah. the head. Right? This is all I got. I got... I can't go any further. Dancers are... Her head is like... Dancers like, are very limber. Yeah, her head is like Michael Jackson leaning forward. You know what I mean? When Michael Jackson do the, the forward lean, yep, yep, you know, yep. the smooth criminal. Mm -hmm. That's the way her head is. It's like that. I can't go no further, but her head is always. <laughs> Some people can do that. Right. I don't know how she can do that. Like, yeah, head is know, imagine, imagine that. how much more creepier it could have been, though, if they were double jointed in multiple places. And when I say double jointed, I mean, that's like, <laughs> let's say you two hands, you know, when, when you shake someone's hand, it's usually, you know, class like this or, you know, the other way around, vice versa, depending on if you're right or left handed. I know a couple guys that can bend their fingers on one hand back so far that they literally can shake their own hand. That's disgusting. That That's <laughs> being double jointed. So I, I'm saying that with these ladies being dancers, I don't find it strange that they can move like that at all. 
Yeah, I know chicks who could touch their their, their tongue to their nose. That was always like amazing when in school. Like, I, I, my tongue can't. Yeah. That, 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 that's that's the comparison you have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about double joints and being able to move in weird ways, and you and is what you come with. That's what these chicks used to do at school. I touch my tongue to my nose, and I used to always try, but I can't. I can't. This is the only way my lips are double joints. It's all that I can do with my that, that double joint. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. I used to do this in. I used to do this in uh in kindergarten. Everyone used to laugh when I did it. So I, ladies, there you go. Here we go. Here's my lip action. Here we go. That was it. That that was my thing when I was little. That 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 made me famous in in kindergarten that I was able to do that. That that, that people that people couldn't do it. <laughs> That's the only thing I couldn't do. Oh that, I could do that people couldn't do. That <laughs> worked for me for long. OTDA is in the building. What's Great. good OTDA? Yeah. I don't OTDA is cool. We, you know he 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 in the round. You know as, as much as he used to be, but I'm just saying life is life, and hopefully he get back to hanging with us like he used to hang with us and so like that. Always good to see OTDA. Yeah. Purple, Shout how are your lips double jointed? They ain't got no joints. Don't worry about it. You just seen it, all right? You just see what you see. <laughs> you just see how they are, brah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, felt I was so popular in in kindergarten just because I could do that and no one else could no one everyone should try and she was like oh, no one could do it I was the only one who could it's do like it like when you're trying to twist your hands in, in that position where like both you can well like wiggle both of your middle fingers at the same time I, I, I don't know why kids are dumb y'all we are. Didn't realize the amount of shit that we thought was cool when we were kids exactly there's no doubt about it all right we're gonna go back to the other screen and we're gonna go to the next picture here of Lovecraft, and it shows this is a, this is a good close up picture of these of these chicks of this chick and what the makeup look like and everything. I got the Joker, the Joker going on there. Yeah, a, a lot yeah. of Joker going on in there, and, and 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 the teeth prosthetics is beautiful. They did a really good job on it and everything else. And you can see that like this is how they really look when they put a different tint on mm -hmm. them during when they when they filmed. To get them, it's a different tinting uh, for the whole scene to make them look like that, and yeah. it, it's just a truly a good job of what, what, how they made it. And is that is that clothes hanging up right here? I think so. The clothes hanging up in the alleyway. Buildings on top of all those storefronts there. It just shows you that that that, that attention that to detail. Yeah, that attention to detail is beautiful. That they put <laughs> hanging people's hanging up their clothes outside in in the alleyway you know what i mean it is a beautiful attention to detail that they did there and they just did a really good job on the makeup and a lighting again they did a really good job on the lighting and everything Absolutely. right there you know all right so we get this is when we get the spell casting going on with montrose and tick and a lot of people said that you know montrose comes up and he tells you that he's dyslexic you know what I mean? In here. So do you think that Montrose messed the spell up? And that's why it happened the way he said, because he's dyslexic. Did he say it right? Well, I, I mean, think, I think there's a possibility that, that he did. But whatever he messed up, it still ended up working because Tick was able to summon. Or, well, I, I can't even say that Tick summoned protection. The thing really just showed up. Tick was just standing there with his hands up in danger. And maybe, you know, that, that monster was just clued into it and it got there lickety split to save him. I feel like it wasn't the spell that protected him, but it, there's a chance that it could be um, Christina because mm -hmm. she needs him for her, her immortality uh, spell. So it would behoove her to keep him alive. But there is a very big difference between the Shoggoth that we saw in the forest to this Shoggoth that came to protect him. Well, we're going to talk about this damn Shoggoth. So, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I don't, think the the spell, I don't think the spell Montrose uh, said came through the way it should. 
but something else happened and they just weren't aware of what that side effect was going to be. Mm-hmm. The Tifa are very good. The, the Joker, the Joker smile is amazing. Yeah, on both of them. You know, mm-hmm. Ronnie is saying, yeah, he did. Yeah, I, th- I think I think he probably messed it up, too. I mean, that, that that's what happens when you have someone that's dyslexic reading. Honestly, you, you know, it, it, for, for this spell, honestly, why didn't Tick say the spell himself? Was yeah. that, like, against the rules? Well, I don't know. He, Montro said, you know, he wanted to do it. Like, he took it, like. Like he said it, like like he. And took- that's why I'm suspect because Montro. It might not have even been Montrose's dyslexia. Montrose been shady from from the very start. He might have just did it on purpose. There's something going on, going going on with Montrose. Yeah, it, it just don't it just don't seem completely right. Something's yeah. off. I don't trust Montrose. Me. I, I really don't. Tony talking about <laughs> long tongue. Queen. <laughs> Let me tell you, 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 this is not a. I will get into my tongue. <laughs> this I is would, not the After Dark series. Yeah, this is not the After Dark Queen RX. If you come on the After Dark, I will talk to you about all that stuff. <laughs> this is a regular <laughs> series, so I'm, a, I'm just gonna leave that there. And mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave, I'm mm-hmm. gonna leave that there. You know, what I mean? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave that there. Come back and everything. Uh, uh, it, uh Ella Marshall's dyslexic can be so annoying. Annoying, I have it. Oh I yeah. Listen, I I I'm dyslexic too, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I'm also author, and it, it is very it, annoying. It it, it, it uh, from what I've found, a lot of times, a lot of people that I know that that write, you know, my, myself included, we have different forms of dyslexia. Yeah, it's it's it definitely is annoying. A lot of times, I could write words that seem backwards, or I could look at a word that I'll I'll look at it and um. Wait, hold up. Drinks and nose. Is Luke in here? Who is this? Where is this? Oh, Joanna w- was just saying drinks and nose, or I don't know. They might be talking about something else. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot, lot, lot of time. Oh, oh, Tamara asks, when is after dark? I do after dark usually Saturday you night, Saturday at night, night right? 10 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. And I, I say so much craziness, I have to delete the stream <laughs> as soon as it's over. But when it's, but it, listen. Ask anyone who's been there in the after dark stream. It's this. It, it's 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 the nightcap stream. Yo, know, after after dark is a uh, very much like uh, ginger ale chats. And for you know, for you new folks that don't know what after dark or ginger ale chats are, well, that that's when we we just happen to be the drunk adults that we are. Because nine times out of, out of ten, we're always drinking, and the conversation just goes wherever the conversation goes. Easiest yeah. way to explain it. The Cosmico husband has dyslexia. A lot of people do, you know, and that, mm-hmm. that, that, that's what it is. You know, like no, it, oh, is it smutty? Is that she said smutty? Is that the word she used? Smutty? No, is it? Oh, okay, yes, yes, Heidi. That you is know, a very good word to use. Yes, yes, it it, it does. We we do talk about the smuts. I talk about. I haven't used heard that word smutty, and I I don't in know a long what. Time. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I've heard that. See that that that's why we're showing our age right here. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to toast to drink the Heidi for that one. I, I, I gotta drink two for that because smutty is a great word. I haven't heard that word in such a long time. <laughs> it's Absolutely. Be, it's beyond smutty. Let's let's put it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond, it's smutty. beyond smutty. It's 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 damn right ornery. It's 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 what it is. All right. <laughs> so you know, Val says uh, ginger ale. Ginger ale and tapatia is the dark yes. or historic. Listen, I don't hold nothing back. I will say it all. I talk about it all, and I'm not gonna talk about it no more. All right. right. Like, if you, you want to update about the you know the deadly dick list or the deadly pussy list, yeah, you can yeah. chat yeah. for that. Yeah, we talk All about right. that. Right. We have the. The Chicago Defender paper saying colored woman crosses the housing line, changing the lines of history. You know, liberal pastor quits over the bias, and you know, <laughs> Lancaster just can't take the fact that look at Letty looking all good in there. And we've seen the article being written, we've seen her getting interviewed for the article. Mm-hmm. The article, so I like the way that they they paid that off. Like, people usually in shows. 
when we've seen her doing the interview, you know, and then it went to people would think, oh, because after that, they got into the elevator and it showed the downward look of the elevator and it showed where the bodies were down there. That, oh, that's the reason why they did that. But the fact that they did that and also paid it off. It shows you what type of show it is and shows you that you have to pay attention to everything that they're not just doing things to do it. They pay these things off Everybody's later up. on in the episode. Yeah. The, the only like thoughts I have on this is it's been a few weeks now, you know, in, in on, on the show timeline. It's, it's probably only been what, like maybe two, three weeks for us, but it's been a bit longer on the show timeline. And this article is just now coming out. And I don't know, I, the, the, the phrasing just, eh, it kind of bugs me a bit. You know, colored woman crosses the housing line. Do you think well, that, you know, colored was, the, but we, colored is what we called back then. Yeah, you know? I mean, true enough, true enough. No, I'm sure her, name, her actual name is mentioned in the article itself, but eh, it is, it is little things like that bug me. All right, so, all right, so I'll tell you a story about my family real quick because I always got my, my aunt Pauline, yep, who sure. uh, mar he, she married my uncle, who was the, uh, who was the first uh, uh, justice for New York. He was the first uh, high court justice for the state of New York. Nice. And, uh, and when she was married, she's a very educated woman. And my aunt Pauline, if I showed you a picture of her, you would think that she was white. Like it's very hard to tell that she's black. If you've seen her, you look at her, you're like, and she's black. Trust me, but you wouldn't think you so. Never know how genetics are gonna come out. So what happened was when in Marcy Projects, the same project mm -hmm. that Jay Z grew up in, mm -hmm. a lot of my family grew up in in those projects. That's why I know a lot of people who knew Jay Z when he was younger. But yep. when she was in there, what happened was they thought she was white, and that, what she would do is she would go down there and get apartments. She got one for my grandmother, which is her sister, and everyone else in my family. She was the one. She would go down there and show her face to the housing authority and say she needed an apartment. And because she was so good looking, they kept giving her apartments. <clears throat> and that's how all my family got into Marcy Projects. If it wasn't for her, they would never got in. That's what's up. Because they thought that she was white. And they I never questioned that. why yeah. you need they thought, oh, she was I like, I need so this apartment. Words. Yeah. They were like, oh, we need this apartment for oh white lady, yep. White lady, yep, beautiful white lady, yep. We'll give you another one, we'll give you another one, bring all your family in. And she was bringing all her family was all black that she was bringing in there. <laughs> and they didn't realize and, and, and that's why Marcy Projects started, you know, truly becoming Marcy Projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, a lot of those um old uh, public housing buildings, even though they say they built them for poorer folks, it, it usually meant poorer white folks. So e even even then, you know, we had to finagle our way in some kind of how. And that's what's up. Yeah, like my great grandmother, you know, looked like that. She um, basically looked like, you know, she was a white woman with the prettiest gray eyes I've ever seen. And <clears throat> because we have a bit of, um, uh, Coley Indian in us, you know, she had that, that, that nice good hair, as they say. So, yeah, I, I, I totally see how all that could work. So, my aunt Pauline, she spoke French, she spoke English and French and Spanish. She was very, you know, you would not know, like, if you see, you you didn't know that she was she was a black woman. You never see that. Yeah, always got to be extra. Mm -hmm. We always yeah. have to go five more moves ahead of white folks to, to, to get anything. The pink houses. Who, who talking about the pink houses? Yeah, I know all about the pink. Yeah, I'm from New York. I'm I'm from Queens, New York. Susan Little. I'm from Queens. My yeah, family so from Queens. From Queens. When, my, when my when my my dad met my mother, he joined the electrical union. And my mom's from North Carolina. My dad grew up in Marcy Projects, but then he joined electrical unit. He moved to Queens, and then I'm from Queens. I grew up in Queens and all that. That's where I'm from and everything. Right. Yeah, like but my I know family is from uh, Guyana. South America, but we we all grew up in Brooklyn. Like my generation, we ba we mainly grew up in Brooklyn. No doubt about it. All right, so then we see Diana. She walk and listen. This is not the normal police station that you see. No, it's a lodge. This is a lodge, Just the lodge where yeah. they took Christina yeah. that one time. She came right. She, in the she, she she came. She found them. She got them in the lodge right here. Mm -hmm. And you know Lancaster with his half black body, and I think that's gonna come back into play. You ever notice that dude's shirts are way too tight? They're very tight. 
like 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 they like, they you like, know they we no vest under that because we can't see the outline for a vest. Yeah, no, that's his little brother's shirt. <laughs> he they definitely young. That's definitely the uh, but I ain't gonna yeah. hold. I ain't gonna hold him on it, you know what I mean? Because he flexing stuff. Listen, he got that black man upper body. He trying to flex that. <laughs> Pretty, much. Pretty much. You know what I mean? He trying to. I ain't gonna hold him on that because he definitely got that going on and everything else like that, you know. But this is this is this chick ain't afraid. Look at her rolled I up mean, on him. He was not for the bullshit no more. No, nah, she was done with it. Yeah, she, she, she wasn't was taking it. it from her family, and she certain wasn't taking it from him. Nah, she was definitely done with it at this point, and she's like, "Yo, listen, pigs, <laughs> mm -hmm. listen, pigs." My know. mama's name is Hippolyta. It's Greek asshole. Yeah, yeah, you gonna try to trace something like mm -hmm. learn, learn, learn your history. <laughs> she did that shit straight up, you know, and that, and then she walks out there and all that and all that good stuff. I, I, I love that. But this is the final scene with her. Uh, coming up where she just don't care no more. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you could see it like building up to it. Like she already had the fire in her because of Emmett and everything else. And she got, and then he broke her down and got her scared a little bit. And then these people got her, and then, and then, and then, and, then, and they got her scared. But then she, and she at this point, like, you know what? What? Right. Like, cool. you're like, fuck, fuck it. Okay. Y'all want to go fist the cuffs? Okay. Let, let's go and do that. Yeah, like, so like I you know what? Backtrack a little bit though, because before we got to this scene, before she left, you know, Lancaster was saying that you know it, I can take that curse off of you if you go and bring me the Ori. So two things with that that have my mind, you know, going. Tick did not take the Ori with him when he came out of his portal. He mm -hmm. grabbed Hippolyta's notebook. He grabbed the key, and then he got the fuck out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. The Ori was still there. And we know those two cops that were there were his men. We know that at least one of them came to investigate because he got Diana's name from that comic. Why doesn't he have the Ori? Yeah, is the Ori really important or is it the it key? It was still that's sitting that? there. But I'm saying, is, is it the key that's important in the Ori or is it, is it the it, Ori itself? He, at, I don't know which one is more important, but he specifically asked D to bring him the Ori. He should already have it. Because his people found her comic book. How the hell they didn't find the Ori? Mm. I have to look back at that and see how that how that played out. And then also D, you know, she she kind of you know did the reverse on him. It, it, it she made it seem like she was thinking about it for a hot second, but then she spit on him and was like, I ain't telling you shit. Fuck you pig and she rolled the fuck out. That's it. And, then he said, and he said she's dead already. Let her go. Yeah. Let her yeah. Go. And I think, I think honestly, I don't think he was actually planning on doing what he did at the end. But because he got the attitude he did from Diana, mm -hmm. he was like, okay, I already done took care of this bitch. Let's just, let me just go to the house and get the damn Ori myself. But the Ori yep. ain't at the Winthrop house no more. It hasn't been there for quite some time. Yeah, and that makes me think that he doesn't know. Uh, you know, it, it's hard. He doesn't know everything because the bottom line, he she was just a uh, precious gift. Thank you for stopping by. Hope you subscribe. Says my uh, grand auntie was the first to so called black woman with her husband to move into an all white neighborhood a few blocks away from the White House. Hey, really? Okay, Pennsylvania Avenue. Okay, I'll see you. Yeah, big, big up, big up, big up right there, precious gift. That is the thank you for that knowledge. We truly really appreciate, appreciate that. that. What I doubt. Yeah, th th that's what it is. You have to integrate these neighborhoods. You got to yeah. do it. You got to right. remember that we have to have this journey because mm -hmm. unfortunately it's 2020 and the shit is still happening, man. Exactly. I remember my, my friend Lori, who's a white woman, like she moved to Florida with her husband and stuff. And she went down there and she was like, and he was talking about moving in this neighborhood. And she goes, is there black people there? And mm. he was like, why? She's like, I don't want to live in no neighborhood without black people. She said, I, he said, I, I grew up in Queens. I, I need to have yeah. my people around me. I need to have some fun. So it's boring just being in a white neighborhood. I don't want to be in that. Right, and right. Well, Precious said that it's uh, her first time here. She did subscribe. All right, kudos, Precious. 
That's what it is. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate the subscription. I appreciate you rocking with us, man. I, I truly, uh, man, I don't mean you, man. I'm saying, I mean, you know, I'm just saying, man. I appreciate you rocking with us. Right. Don't take the subscription away. All right. Let's just keep. So, this is the actual spell that we see them casting again, right here with, with Tick and Montrose and everything. And he's, you know, why you cut the inside of your hand and get it? You know what I mean? That's a bad spell spot to cut cut your finger and drip it down or something you know <laughs> why it gotta be the inside of your palm you know what stuff you gotta do with the inside of your palm why do people do that all the time they always show people when it whether it's la costa nostra or whatever it's always the inside of the palm that gets cut i wonder why i do it listen cut my pinky finger because i don't use it that much <laughs> if you could you cut something you know what i mean that shouldn't take that long to heal <laughs> Hey, yo, real quick, um, in the chat, Joan Smith said the Ori is actually still at Hippolyta's house, and I forgot about that. Hippolyta took the key with her, but there was already a mechanism there that she put the key in that wasn't actually the Ori. Thank you, Joan. Appreciate that. Yeah, so he's actually just looking for the key. I don't think the Ori is important. I think that what's important is the key. No, he just, asked, no, he asked Diana specifically for the Ori. Yeah, he wants the Ori because he knows there's something to I do think, with yeah, it. He knows the key the is key probably that's in the Ori. Because that's what she, she figured out how to get the key. So yeah, you, yeah. you can give him the Ori Ori. If the key ain't in there, you yeah, know, it's going to be useless, right? You, you, you can have that. You know what I mean? And everything else. Purple Lover says the, the, the blood flow there. I can understand the blood flow come from the palm and the hand, but I'm saying. I squeeze my pinky and get you the blood. <laughs> I've seen some pinky fingers drip some blood, man. <laughs> I mean, every you know I mean? I'm just saying I wouldn't do it because it makes no sense. That, that, that's just a big thing. Let's go through that. We're getting on three hours, so we got to keep. Okay, so yeah, yeah. we talked this. about this a little bit already. If he if he got it right, we we come to the last scene here. One of the last scenes of dealing with her. And Christina, you know, it seems like Ruby got to her a little bit and she mm -hmm. paid people to reenact the, the, the Emmett Till's death. How did you take this? I, you know, I, I know there were, <clears throat> I, break that. I watched, you know, different uh, people's reactions and some reviews. It, I, from, from the moment she did it, once, you know, that guy, you know, was saying, I don't understand why anybody would want to die like that. And he was asking Christina questions and Christina was like, you know, blah, 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 blah. You've been paid. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. It, you know, it, is this what I think it is? And they started going on her and she wasn't fighting back. So I said, OK, she she actually took what Ruby said to heart and she's trying to see what's what. And she, she, you know, she paid those those uh, men to do that, specifically with the barbed wire and uh, the cotton gin uh, fan. And yeah, yeah, that that happened, you know. And immediately, just watching it, I said, okay, she is actually not trying to really prove anything to herself, but she wants to try to, you know. Do, do Ruby a solid, you know, to put it simply. She wants to try to do Ruby a solid and understand the passion that she feels. And, and like Christina, she, you know, she she's, again, been around for a bunch, uh, a few centuries, I, I would say, at least two centuries. She's old as shit. And she's pretty much dead inside right now. You know, but and I think that's her biggest attraction to Ruby because Ruby is so passionate about everything she feels and she wants to, you know, ha have something like that. She doesn't want to lose Ruby because of that passion. So she put herself through this. And when she came out, she was crying. But after a minute where like the, the mark of Cain activated, we saw when it, uh, you know, started turning red on her skin. It seemed like she might have started laughing. So she was like, cry, laughing. And for her, I think that's a fitting response. Because again, she doesn't really feel shit. But now because of Ruby, she is feeling something. So it's it, it's warped. Like, you know, like I said, their whole relationship is warped and twisted. And it's weird. And I'm here to see the whole train wreck that it's going to be. All right, so I'll give my take on this whole situation real quick. Uh, Susan Little said it was a mockery. All right, so this is where I feel about it. That's who? 
this is what I think about it. What, what, why, why, the, why the showrunners did it and why it was done for the show. All right, the, the whole thing is revolves around Emmett Till's. And I mm -hmm. told people the 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 um, pre, pre previous video I did that they were not going to show Emmett Till's death. They were going to, even though they had the character, they were not going to show. It would have been disrespectful to the to the family. I said exactly they're going to show the aftermath, the funeral. They're not going to show the body. They're not going to do. It. I think that they have too much respect for the family mm -hmm. of Emmett Till's mm -hmm. to actually show him in that condition and show exactly what happened to him. So what I think the showrunners wanted to do was. Though it happened to a black person, they wanted to show what happened to him to a white person so that when people who watched the show could actually visualize that being happening to them. So mm -hmm. when you have something happen to black people and you're a white person at home watching the show, you may not be able to say, hey, how would this be if it happened to me? But when you see it happen to a, a skinny, petite white woman, it shows exactly how devastating how deadly and how disgusting that they did this to a young child and i think that's why they did this and they had her go through this the showrunners how they go had her go through it just to show the people how disgusting and barbaric it really was that happened now her reaction if you want to go back to the show itself and why they did it or why it happened was 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 you know was crazy it's it was kind of like d's reaction when she had a thing she's was was crying and then laughing and she was all over the place with it and everything else like mm -hmm. that but i think that that's what, uh the way the reason why it went down and the way the reason why the showrunners did it like that but i did see a lot of um of, of of bad reactions on Twitter of why they said oh they shouldn't have done yeah. that and everything else. but I think that's the reason why they they truly did it. Yeah, <coughs> I feel you on that definitely. And all that, and we see her get out, and then that's it. So then we get to we get to the part of the sisters realized, uh, reuniting in the red light, right? And I think the red light's very important here, even though that they're inside of uh where she's doing uh photos. Yeah, she's doing photography. Yeah, red light isn't going to mess up the negatives. Exactly, but I well, think a lot of photographers have red lights in their rooms. I think it's also something to do with Ruby crossing over to the bad side that she's saying, mm -hmm. telling her at the same time that she wants to uh, learn. She's going to learn magic. And I think the red is saying that that's a bad thing of her thinking that way. It's an evil way of her thinking and everything yeah. else. You know what I mean? But that's why they put her in a red light. You know what I mean? Because showing that, you know, something's wrong with you, shorty. Why are you thinking that you're getting involved with this woman that you want to learn magic? And she's telling her, hey, I'm going to learn this magic. I'm going to do this and I'm going to learn it. And I think that's why they put her in the red light to show that, you know, it's evil that what she's trying to learn that not that she's evil, but that that she's going on the wrong path. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, you know, you got to think back to how Ruby's outlook on the world, you know, like when they were having um, the, the housewarming party and she was, you know, break, breaking down her thoughts on employment and whatnot to uh it, it was letty and a few other people around and she was like you know if if most black folks thought like me then you know we we, we wouldn't be in half half the shit that we're in so mm -hmm. you put that up against what ruby's doing now and this conversation they had ruby's views are a bit skewed mm -hmm. and yeah. you can see why i can totally see why they are and where she is, but you know, my my only you know really big problem with this conversation they had is Ruby did spill the beans pretty much. You know, she said, you know, I know all about Artem and how George actually died, and Letty did not cue in and tell her the other side of the story. You know, like 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 I said, all folks always say there's three sides to every story: his side, his side, and the truth in the middle. Mm -hmm. So and like I said, Christine is a great wordsmith. I'm very sure she spun that narrative when she said it has to do with you know magic and your family. She was totally talking about Letty and everything that happened at Artem, and Letty should have told her the version of the story as she lived it, instead of just saying you know you can't trust her. She's using you. You know she doesn't just want to give you magic. You need to give Ruby context. 
Ruby is one of those folks that you have to absolutely break everything down to the nitty gritty for her to see the whole picture. Mm hmm. Kashim Co saying Ruby's name means red. Vanessa yeah. says, you know, L Letty wears a lot of red, especially red lipstick. You know, I, I think it all has these symbolisms that we definitely mm -hmm. see in, in this conversation with them because you, you could see in this picture the joy that she feels in her face, that she feels that I'm going to learn magic. Like, <laughs> Wait, she like, still that. thinks she is the one that's completely in control. And she isn't. But by that same token, Chrysillium, when it comes to their relationship, isn't the one that's in control either. Like I said, it, it's a toxic relationship between them, and it's going to blow up in both of their faces. Mm -hmm. Without a shadow of a doubt. And I think her joy will turn to sadness in the end. Very much. Very oh, much. Yeah. But right but right then you see ruby is the one who who goes to the or she's like listen i don't want no one to go to jail let me let me right, go like you don't want to have your baby in jail yeah let me let like. me take the door let me take that and that just shows you know who she is she's she's she's, yeah, she's still right out for her sister. Sister. you know she's still got she's just she's she's misguided in some ways but you know she's still she's she's there for her sisters and they come to the door we know what happens when she gets there you know, because they want to search and they use them the all these Muslim people here hiding out, blah blah, blah making up the excuse. But he can't get he can't he can't get through the door and everything else. And that's when the shots get fired and everything else. But before the shots get fired, they do go into the scene of of Christina of Diana uh, hang, hanging out here with, with the bat. And, you know, and as I said, she's got the black, she's got the Negro League hat on mm -hmm. and she holds that, it's like Jackie Robinson in the first episode was beating up the demons. We see her go through that same exact situation. And, you know, she set this trap herself. That, that That's the, that's what let, lets you know that how that's much of a boss she's become. She said, listen, y'all coming for me, I'm coming for you now. I'm locking this door, I'm locking this door. You only gonna come through this door. It's kind of like 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 Bronx Tale. Uh, if you have anyone seen Bronx Tale, no, the biker when, when the bikers go inside the bar and the guy <laughs> asks him to ask him to leave and they won't leave and they start acting up and he goes and he locks the door and goes, you know what? Now you can't leave. Mm hmm. Now, now you can't. Know. Leave. Based on a true story, if y'all didn't know, that was actually like Chaz Palminteri's story, dude that played Sonny. Mm hmm. He wrote yeah. that whole thing. But uh, what what I was thinking, like she she basically pulled a Kevin McAllister on him, without the extra booby traps. She got to the house. She knew they were coming, and she set it up to where she is in one room with a weapon. Y'all can't come in no other way but this door, and I'm gonna see you coming when you get here. And you can catch all of these hands. You catch it all, and that's the bottom line. She's like, listen, I got the pipe. <laughs> Right, yeah, she, she, and she was getting it. Granted, oh. eventually, though, because that pipe was not going to stop them, they were still going to get her. But it sped the process along because Montrose's punk ass came in. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. couldn't see what she was seeing. But I question, like, why couldn't he see the blood starting to splatter everywhere? Yeah, I, that 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 was that that's that was a weird situation. But you know, she, it gets to the point sometimes in life when you just like you know, I, if I'm going out, I'm going out on my terms. Facts. And Facts. that's what it seemed like. It was like, uh, like, listen, I may not be able to beat them, but I, if I'm gonna go out, I'm not going out running. Yep. I'm not doing anything yep. like that. I'm just sitting right there. Purple lover <laughs> says. Tony, I love the fact that she confronts them directly, and that was uh, that was so freaking amazing to me. No doubt about it, because she's yeah. just like, listen, if I'm she going out, the bullshit. I'm going out on my terms, and that's it. And that's when we see her get the scars on her arm. It's just the one chick who grew her nails, who hit the scar. The I other one didn't do it. It was just that situation. The skin. See, and, and that's the that that's the thing with that. Like, first of all, like the the creepiest damn part of that scene was when the the uh second twin was going in and she turned around looked right at the camera and, and stuck her tongue out you know ba basically looking at us saying mm -hmm. uh, we about to get this bitch what y'all gonna do yeah like like she was like that, well, yeah that's, that's, that's what it was when she yes, did that to us to the camera she was like we didn't do nothing you ain't gotta look at us like that no thank you mm. no that's it's exactly. nuts. It was nuts. And, you know, I just, I commend D really for everything that she put into that scene. And, you know, I really think, you know, that actress 
for how young she was, she really, you know, came through in that scene. You know, she sold this whole episode. She definitely did. Herself. She definitely carried the episode. She definitely did a great sure. job carrying the episode without a doubt. All right, we're gonna get to these last because it's, it's yeah, 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 yeah. We all got work in the morning. Let's wrap There's up. No doubt. So listen, we've seen Tick in this situation, and Tick is in the situation that we see every black man in this day. He puts his hands up to the mm -hmm. police, and even it's though he does even though he does it, he still get. They still shoot him down. <laughs> they still shoot him down. And I think that's why they they show the dog tags on him. Dog tags represent dead soldier. Like, bro, look, I fought for this country. Can't get. Does not. Does that not win me any cool points at all? Like my man, straight spent spent the whole of the housewarming party in his uniform on purpose. Mm -hmm. To try to let them know, yo, we're, we're not that different. I your people fought, I'm sure. I fought with them. Leave us alone. But no, here he comes up a little bit late. And, you know, he, he sees the bullets have been going on. And also, I got to give a shout out. Because just a little bit before this scene, we saw Letty sitting on the floor. And when she noticed that the invulnerability mark was working, her resting bitch face in that scene was everything because she was just again also done with the bullshit mm -hmm. and she was just sitting there like <sighs> well lancaster said you know we don't know how much magic they know that's yeah. why he was scared to attack him he's like we don't know what they know we and then know he came much. out and did all of this which was really surprising you know not that he's one of the smartest folks in the world but you legit just saw that you can't enter this woman's house. You know that she has protections up. She knows about magic. So why then would you put your whole team in danger if you don't know what else she can do besides block you from coming in the house? Exactly. And that's when that you, see Letty, makes sense. you see Letty looking through. She's like, after all that beef, and she's like, not my man. Oh, like, no, not Bay. No, you ain't going to get my Bay. Mm -mm, here I come. Not, she's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. You ain't taking my man from me. And she right. go out there. And, and, and listen, you know, people got to know, man. People got to know. If you, look, if you look at it like we talked about chess before, we know all that. It's the queen that protects the king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that that's the bottom line. It's the queen on the chessboard that can move that in any which way she want to go. She can go as far as she want to go. She can do anything. It's her. She's the one who protects the king. Can't do now. He got. He can move one way this way, one way to the side. That's it. Right. Now, going that. anywhere she wants. Anywhere she wants. Mm -hmm. That's just the bottom line. And, and, and without a queen in your corner. You can't make it as a man. And that's just the bottom line. I don't care. Anyone said without 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 someone who loved you like that, who with you no, like well, that. Who, who was it? Who was it that did it? What wasn't it James Brown that pulled that up? For what? This is a man's world. Uh-huh. But it wouldn't be nothing without a woman. There ain't nothing. Or a little girl. You know? Bottom line. You, got, you, got, you, you gotta be a queen. You gotta have your queen. And Letty proved this shit. You know, right off the rip, had that shit hit tick, he might have died, but Lady came through. But then, lo and behold, it's not even Letty that saved him. Mm -hmm. I it's thought that would be, I it. thought it'd be, I thought it'd be Letty's body to block the bullet. But that's no. what I was thinking too. And that's that, that's what they set it up until you got the you, you got their own monster. And mm -hmm. not only they got their own monster, the monster is black. Yes. <laughs> Every other one you see, it, it, has right. more, it has more limbs than the other ones. Mm -hmm. It has two extra, and I, I don't know if they're feet or arms, but it has two extra limbs. So, where the hell did this shark off come from? Exactly. And we know if you get bit by a shark off, you turn into one. Exactly. And I don't know why they were using cows as incubators for these things, but that. Baby shark off look like the other adult ones we saw in the forest. Now this is the, the who the fuck this, made this, this one. This is the super powered one right here. Yeah, this is the one that's yeah. super powered without a shower of that. You know what I mean? This is hey, the one. Up. shout out to Beef and Bernie is in the chat. What up, Beef and Bernie? I, I can't talk about that. This is not after dark stream, Beef and Bernie. We can't go into all that. <laughs> 
But these, these, this shark, listen, this shark gonna take out every cow. Right. Everybody shook everybody out they draws, man. And Lancaster get taken Lancaster, out. I don't think Lancaster's gone, though. So I don't think Lancaster's dead. I, I think, think that that's why we have the body parts. I think he'll be able to take his body parts. He'll put other black people's body parts or whoever mm -hmm. on his body. I think that's why he does it anytime he gets harmed in any place. He's got some ability because that's of That's why he always got them long shirts on. Yeah, we have working with some scientists. He could just change his body parts. So I don't think Lancaster's dead. And, you know, obviously we get the last scene with, with, with Tick and realizing that this this works for him. <laughs> this, yeah. That this works you know, for him. Uh, shout out to uh, Milo Loves You. She said Let Letty is a keeper. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Seriously, from episode one, you know, L Letty is about that life. You you put her man in Deja, nah, she coming for you. Yeah, no, no, let let Letty let Letty is is a ride or die. Dime yeah. piece for sure. She a ride or die. She riding what she, she, she is. The, she's like the ultimate roundaway girl right now. Mm -hmm. Ain't no doubt about it. Here for it. it. But my biggest question though, Tony, and I want to know how you feel about it. Uh -huh. How the fuck are they gonna explain all these bodies? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. There's a lot of bodies out there. There ain't no neighbors out there. <laughs> Nobody. And, you know, and again, see, and I question that too. When nobody looking out their windows, nobody was looking out their doors, nobody across the street was on their front lawns. How do you hear a hail of bullets and see police lights outside your home and you ain't looking to see what's going on? Mm hmm. Now, there's something definitely going I'm on. I'm questioning all of this tomfoolery. How is this going to get covered up? Chat room, what do y'all think? How is this going to get covered up? I, I, you know, someone told me that they think the body's going to get taken into the basement down the elevator. That's and a lot I, of damn bodies to be moving, though. That is a lot of bodies. But and when I, things get quiet after, let's say everybody was just scared and they were hiding. Now that all the noise has stopped, they're going to be looking out the windows and what they're going to see Tick and Letty and some of the residents of the house moving bodies into the crib. That's yeah, not going to work. That's not going to work for nobody. No, we, 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 that, I, I don't even know if it'll be brought up. Maybe it will. This show has brought up a lot of other things, so True. I could see them bringing this up too again. It could be a situation like that, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes and everything else, and all that. We'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely see. I think that is the that is the last pitch. That's the last one. Yo, Glennis Stur Sturdivant says it's a spell. That's another new name. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yep. Hopefully, uh, hard, sure hard reset. Hard reset. That's a new name right here. Hopefully you are uh, subscribe and everything and, and come through and everything and, and, and chill with us. Listen, next time you're going to see me live is Sunday with LMR, Lady and Dom podcast right after episode nine as I will be live with LMR and we will break that, give our initial reactions and break down the episode and all that. So I'm going to have to you know, cut this. Listen, we've been up three hours, over three hours. That means the only right, people well, watching this are us. <laughs> one, 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 one last thought. Just uh, ER Grandpa said, Tick told the beast, you know, clean up your mess. But that still isn't going to take care of the cars. Mm -hmm. um, unless unless the shark all has, you know, can eat through metal. Well, and gas. Exactly. So, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe the shark eats everyone. That, that I mean, would be maybe. the easiest way. Maybe. Because just utter chaos. Yep. Hopefully you subscribe to. <laughs> you know, hopefully you subscribe to. Hope we get some more new subscribers and all that good stuff. Listen, AK, thank you for joining me. Oh, no, thank you for having me on, brother. Always oh, a pleasure. Man, you know what I mean? Put the big camera so people see us right here. Let the people know where they can find you. Um, I do uh, surprisingly have a channel. Um, I have been working on some uh, theory vids. I got a few more that I'm going to put out before the season finale comes up. Um, Check me out, Alicia Kingston, on uh, on the YouTubes. Um, I, I don't always post on Twitter, but I am there frequently enough. AK underscore DSO9, but zero nine. Um, and I, I always say you'll find me on my friends' channels you know, quicker than you'll find me on my own. So definitely sub to Teflon because I do hang with him a lot of times. Sub to Monero Geek TV because, you know, me and her always be doing some different breakdowns, uh, drinks and no's who's now Drawbridge Media, go check them out. And, you know, just, you know, sub, sub to the family, y'all, because, you know, y'all know what we do. Most of y'all know us from Game of Thrones. Y'all y'all know we all run in the same circles and we support each other. So that's what we're going to continue to do. 
No doubt about it. And Costume Coast, we got 150 people here watching. That's the most we ever have on a Lovecraft. Thursday. Thank y'all all, especially not even on the Sunday night. When we got 150 right, on people Thursday, out. right? We all got to go to work in the morning, but we still sitting here chilling. Exactly. That's how much we got. Oh, Kiki just came Kiki, in. Wait, on, on Mom, the, what she, man, she's late, right? We we turning what off. She's she coming up in here, right? <laughs> but I will be back on a live stream on Sunday after Lovecraft Country is over about 10, 15 Eastern time with LMR to give my reaction to the video. And then we're going to come back again. We're going to keep this going. We only got two episodes left. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to AK47 channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you are alerted every time I go live. Just in case you, uh, you know, you're wondering, it hits you up and it'll let you know. Subscribe, and then when you hit that bell, you got to hit everything so that everything. you know specifically my channel, so that you know when I get the subscription. Thank you all for having enough. If you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, please spread this across the realm, and please subscribe. And until next time. You know what it is. Peace.